listening to the Getting Salty Experience podcast. Hello, Atlantic Highland, <laughs> and away <laughs> we go, Leatherhead Nation. I'm starting to work on it. I'm starting to like that Lloyd Lindsay Young again. Oh, I love that. You just got to get it sooner. I can't we uh, put incorporate that into the show uh, intro somehow? We, we probably can. We'll work Hello! on that. <laughs> he was shot down. That guy was shot. Oh, man. Yeah. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Love the head nation. People in the chat. Susie. So happy Susie's to see back. you. We got William Cooney, the loony. Yeah, he's back. I don't see uh, Mrs. Pro. Oh, there's uh, Mrs. Procaccini's husband. He's in there, bro. We got the Rev back. Darren DeFries, as always. Tilly. Tilly's in there. You got, you got all the regulars. All the regulars yes. in there. Tonight. Welcome Sweet. back to the Getting Salty Experience podcast. We bring the firehouse kitchen table to you. And our uh, our next guest was just telling us that. He's been around the world to fire departments, and they're all fucked up. Guys, <laughs> I, we are. That's one thing that they are. There's all, it's do. a common denominator. Yes. Well, you got to be a little touched to be, uh, I guess, to run touched. a burning building. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, I had to set something up. Just testing it out. Some, no, I had to set it up because we shared yeah, it. I knew. Don't do it before the show. Wait till we get on it. So. <laughs> oh. yeah. I had to do it. That's the only... Yeah, bro, yeah. <laughs> if you yeah. weren't Lloyd, that's yeah. the only way we could get it done. Uh, uh, all right. I just wanted to know if there's something else you want to throw up. Yeah. Do you yeah. anything else? No, no. I, no, no, I, no. I, I can find no, something if you want. Don't take no shit off nobody, no, no, guys. I'll, you know what I mean? I'll find something. sure? He's going to find something. You like my new hat? I love it. My old my old new stock. Never worn. Never worn. Wow. just found it in a... Want a couple of bags. Take it to the shop. Maybe somebody want you to autograph it. You know? uh, no. You love doing that. Yeah, I love it. So anyway, we're gonna... me and Louie, you know, there's no show. The next two shows, we will be on the road going to Ohio to the Firehouse Magazine show. Uh, pull up that shirt. We are the official sponsor of the shirt for that show. So if you want to see a really cool shirt, Firehouse just... Expo. 40th anniversary. Put the stick up, bro. It's like a charcoal. It's a really nice shirt. On the front, you got the little pull box with the American flag. Come see me and Louie. Chit chat. Maybe we may or may not be drinking in the booth. I don't know. Allegedly. You know, maybe. Allegedly. So come all over to the We're booth. We're going to have some lobsters. We're going to have some lobsters. Uh, yeah. We're here. Our next uh, <laughs> guest, he's also a Patriots fan. But he gets in the car, he drives down there, and watches the Patriots. Pats. He's like Tom Brady. That's wicked smart. Oh no, is that something? Is that a book? <laughs> He's wicked. Our next wicked guy is smart. wicked smart. He really is. Is he laughing? He at likes us? apples. Too. He looks like he's got a smile. It's kind of hard to tell. You know, <laughs> he's, he's, got, he's got the big walrus mustache. You can't tell. I told Hank. I, I told Tank him. I said, Tank, that's what you're going to look like a little while. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You know what? Let's get to another commercial really quick. Tell him about the. Uh... Come with camera. Uh, well, yeah, that and a couple of things, and the uh, what do you call it, chat? The, the uh, yeah, that. Well, we're gonna work, welcome back New Jersey Fire to our show, and here we go. Established in 1930 and under the current ownership since 1987, the New Jersey Fire Equipment Company handles a complete line of fire department equipment and supplies. Headquartered in Greenbrook, the company operates full 3M Scott service facilities in Ridgefield Park and Toms River, staffed by 10 fully authorized Scott certified technicians with a fleet of six fully equipped service vans. All New Jersey fire technicians and sales representatives are active or retired firefighters, officers or chief officers, career and volunteer. They understand the business and the importance of their work. New Jersey Fire has represented Scott since Earl Scott entered the SCBA business at the end of World War II. Among other leading manufacturers represented by New Jersey Fire are Globe and Firedex Turnout Gear, Mercedes Hose, Task Force Tips and Akron Brass, Hygienol, Fire Hooks, Arctic Compressors, MSA Carnes Helmets, ChemGuard Foam, Alkalite and Duo Safety Ladders, BA Face Shield Protectors, Truckman's Choice Saws, Groves gear racks and washer dryers, SuperVac fans, RPI, Streamlight, and many others. A New Jersey incorporated and based company, sales and service are limited to the state of New Jersey. Find us now at www.njfe.com. That's www.njfe.com. 
Nice. And, uh, Jimmy yeah. took me out to dinner. We went down to Jersey. He's got great guys working for him, man. He's got hard charging firemen. He's got Ziggy. Me and Louie went out to dinner with Ziggy. He's the captain of the new uh, squad six down there. Uh, Guy came back from cancer. He's awesome. He's awesome. He's a hard charger from Patterson. Uh, they got the captain of the rescue from Jersey City. His name escapes me. For this. I'm sorry, brother. Uh, so he's got a whole bunch of firemen working for him, so they know the ins and outs, bro. Awesome company. Jimmy's good. He's got more money than Refrano. I think it's falling out of his pockets. <laughs> whoa, whoa, I don't know how that's possible, yeah. but Wait, you know, Louis gave me a stack the other day. I he did, felt bad yeah. For me, so Jimmy's got felt that. Bad for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy keeps that in the visor of his car, bro. That stack. That's how much cash he's got. Oh, that's so, uh, just tell him about the super chat, really quick. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, guys. The super chat. You know the deal. You got a question re related to tonight's show, please. Ask it, or if you just want to simply support us, this is one way to go ahead and do it. So hit us up in the super chat if you so be need to, rather. Excuse me. Right. Awesome. All right, Ruff, you want to bring him in, Bob? Yeah, I hope I say his last name correctly. Just say Dana. From He's up there. All right, coming to the stage from Portland, Maine, firefighter Dana as Dorian. Hey. Hello. In the log cabin of Portland, Maine. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, kid? Not much. You pronounced the name right. It's nice. nice. Yeah, I've had it pronounced a lot of different ways, but that was right on. So. Astorian? Oh no, yeah, you, uh, worse than that. Okay, yeah. leave it at that. So you're up at a you're up at a log cabin in Maine somewhere? Yeah, up in, I live in Scarborough now, Scarborough, Maine. Where is that? It's probably about 15 minutes from Portland. It's uh, mm -hmm. south of Portland. It's on the coast. It's yeah, I'm about 10 minutes from the beaches. It's got to be you're wicked good. lobster. Oh yeah, it's lobster. Not lobster. lobster. It's <laughs> got to be. You guys got the accent, so yeah, yeah. It's got to be <laughs> wicked cold up there, though. I'm sure. <laughs> no, not yet. No. I was gonna say no. it's got to be like 32 right now. No doubt. No, no. We have got electricity up here too. Okay? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, we yeah, get we're in, up. We get yeah, up on you, right? <laughs> no. We'll get that shit cleared up right <laughs> off. Right? What about the bathroom? Is the bathroom in the house? You got to go outside. <laughs> it's inside. We get inside plumbing. You do. All right. Yeah. Good. I've been listening to this shit from you guys in New York for 50 years. I mean, every time you talk, what's it like up there, you know? That's funny. The wolves chase you at night? No, we've got street light. Okay? I don't know. Oh. It looks mighty dark out of those windows over there, Well, bro. it is dark. I hung, I hung some tar paper out there so you wouldn't see the sun. Okay. Oh. Yeah. All right, let's get, oh, uh, let's get patriotic ready. before Susie oh. uh, loses her shit in there. All right, here we go. Stand by. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Being chased by the wolves. Amen. <laughs> Is there somebody put it on it? Oh, wait, we go to the oh chat. Oh, here we go. God, that is so right freaking there. Rev, funny. Uh, Rev is so generous. We love you, Rev. Thank you, brother. We got yeah, the word of the day. Oh, oh, we do. Oh, oh yes, we do. Hold on. Oh, I don't even know about it. I came in late. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. It's a wicked, a wicked pisser. pisser. <laughs> uh, it's a wicked pisser. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you, Zach. That was good. That was perfect timing, Zach. I saw. Yes, that. excellent. Nice, nice. All right, so let's go back. This this man's got thirty one years on the job. In the mid seventies, he got on the job, bro. But you, you green little snot noses probably weren't even born then, right, Ruff? Oh no. yeah. You know, I think that uh, Dana spent more time in the wicked pisser than most ah! guys. Are. Oh, right out the yeah! back, bro. <laughs> That most of these guys have on the jab, you know what I'm saying? For sure. Right, so where'd, so where'd you grow up? Where'd you grow up? Go Portland. Back. Portland. It's across the bridge from Portland. Uh, you, weren't, you weren't raised by a, a wolf pack or anything. Like no, that, no, no. I had I had a family, parents, and <laughs> automobiles, and sure. no wild horses or any of that oh, shit. Oh, my so, face! Right. You got to hurt, right. man. Yeah, we had heat in the house too. We didn't have <laughs> we God bless you. <laughs> Oil trucks. <laughs> you know? So. Yeah, it's not that bad up here. I don't know if you guys have ever been up here. It's pretty civilized now. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Uh, oh, shit. So, All right, so you grew uh, up where? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Yeah, I grew up in South Portland. Uh, I went to South Portland High School, graduated there in 72. Uh -huh. And then I went to the uh, vocational school because they had a fire science program. 
And that's one thing I always just knew I wanted to be in the fire department. I didn't have all that waffling growing up. Oh, I don't know what I want. I just wanted to be in the fire department. So Did you have people in your family that were on? My great-grandfather, who was back, he started in 1890. Whoa! In the restaurant era. Yeah, he 1890. Was back in 1890. Up in uh, up at where you are? Portland, Maine. Yeah, he was on engine two. It was a steamer. I got some pictures. We'll see. Paid? Later. Paid for him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was paid. Wow. That's dude, that might be the oldest going back. 1890. So. Yeah, he was in there uh, 36 years. He never worked on a motorized piece. He was always on Hustron because the last buses <clears throat> uh, were in 1929, and he retired in 1926. Wow. He was, he was a driver of the schema from 1890 to 1906 in uh, May of 1906 to 26, he was the engineer. So he, he was on a steamer and that's what he did. And he basically back in those days, those guys lived at the firehouse. They had 15 days on and one day off. 15 they, on one off. Yeah. Holy mackerel. They could, you go look at the old journals. They could go home for lunch or go home for dinner. And they had to come back, but they, you know, they were there. They lived there. They had the Dalmatian in there chasing the horse? No, no, not, not that I saw any pictures, you know. <laughs> in a lot of fire stations, the Dalmatian, the only reason they use that is because that was a herding dog. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it was used to herd animals. I think you've heard that before. And the funny part was it was a very protective dog of the, the horses. So really? It ran ahead, barked, and kept the other animals away. And then when they got to where they were, they would, they would just keep all the animals and people away from the, the animals, the horses. Mm -hmm. All right, I got one for you then. Uh, maybe What do you got? I call it up there. You call it a call or a run? What do you, uh, uh, it's it's a run. Okay, so why was it a run? Because the horses ran. I mean, and who else? And the firemen. The firemen would have to, if yeah. they missed the, the uh, horse run, they would run to the box. So that's what well, yeah, the Yeah, original, the original wagons or, or hand tubs that we've got a couple in there, the men pulled them. So they would take a, they would call it a run. run. Right. If you go over to England, when I, I was over in London Fire Brigade, they call it Shout. They, they, okay, there he is right there. He's the very uh, the middle, the second to the left. Walter F. Libby. And that was Ladder 2. Wow. That was around, cool. yeah, 18, uh, uh, probably 1900, I did think. Did you have was. to, like, where did you have to get this picture? I mean, did you have to go search for this? That thing? was, my grandmother gave it to me. No that was, way. That was Come on. Yeah, I got his retirement badge. It's solid gold. I mean, it's not that chintzy shit they give you. How long did he live after? After uh, he died he in retired. Uh, he retired in twenty six, and he died, I believe, it was in forty seven or forty eight. All right. Oh shit. Yeah. And how could your dad never want to be a fireman? My father was military. Oh, well, right. he was my mother's <laughs> side. Yeah, my dad was military. He was in the service for well, army, and he was over at the end of World War Two. He was over in Trieste, Italy, and then he came back and. Stayed in the army, then he got detailed over into the guard, and he was full time guard recruiter up here. And you know, uh, he he passed away about two years ago, a year or two ago. He was ninety three. Oh, Ooh, nice. Yeah, I'll sign the papers it's for that. Good, yeah, I'll sign those papers. Too, uh, he though. could tell you some stories. You know, he he didn't talk too much about the war, but he told me a couple of stories when they're in Italy. Some of the, the Englishmen got a little mouthy, and I guess they had to wrap them up. So. Uh, <laughs> The boys got the hammer to him. Get a little thumping, maybe. Yeah, they got a little thumping from the U.S. boys. Yeah. A little Love blanket party. It. I love it. Yeah, I love a yeah. blanket party, all yeah, right. Thank you for sure. Yeah, we didn't talk too much about it, but yeah, that was fun. That story. most guys who would just were in that, you know, sort of action, they say the same thing about his father. Their fathers, they never really talked about yeah, it much. Maybe once or twice, you know. Yeah. When you uh, when you were a kid, were you going to the firehouse? Was it was? Yeah, I, I remember know. when he brought me in because he had a lot of firemen in the guard, and I remember I was little. He was carrying me. I remember the first time I went into Central. <clears throat> I couldn't been more than four or five, but I still recall the day going in there. You know, he had me in his arms. He lugged me in, and he knew some of the firemen. And I was looking at the trucks, and I was just you know, awestruck back then. And I never had this. Well, I don't know what I want to do in life. I knew I'd like to be a teacher, and it all blended in. Getting in the fire service, and I taught for a lot of years too as, as a fire instructor. So you were living the dream, Dana. I oh yeah, right. The problem is, it went too fast. Yeah, man, it does it go too fast, fast, right? You know. You know, I'm going to start asking this to all the guests. I want to see a different opinion now. A fireman born that way, or is it something that you pick up as you get older? What do you? What say you? I was born this way, I guess. Yeah, I wish I had, I wish I had that song. It reminds you. me of Skull from uh, from Harrisburg. Harrisburg, it's same like it's in it's in the gene. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. And everything I did was fire oriented. All my part time work, you know, I did some 
you know, painting, insulating, stuff like that. But mm-hmm. I, I couldn't get into it. And, you know, when I taught the kids at the college, I used to tell them, you know, my main highway was the fire department and all my exits were jobs related to the fire service, right. teaching, you know, college, the state, uh, nuclear power plant, all that stuff it was all just side exits. Right. You know, and it was, and I wasn't going to work. You know, I was <clears> doing <throat> what I liked. So I didn't really go to work. I mean, was, I we say that all the time. Like, that, what job yeah. do you have where you can't wait to get to work? Uh, yeah. Right. We're on Friday or Saturday night. Can't yeah, wait to get to work. You know, back when I first came in, they gave us our uh, vacations and, you know, by a month and a whack. So when you get in January, February, yeah, that's what we I do. just would sell it back to them and work. Ours is a month at yeah. a time. You yeah. could swap, you could swap like half of it. The guys swap half the vacations and stuff like right. that. But, yeah. But uh, when did you, uh, so when, when did you like start thinking about taking the test? How did that all come about? Okay. Well, I went to school 72. I graduated with associate degree in 74. You had to be 21 to get on the job. And my, my goal was Portland. And, um, you know, I rode with them. I rode with them all the time. And I started out was just weekends. Then I hooked up with a group and I, I stayed with them right up till I got hired. So you were buffing like straight out. like Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I was riding in the Bronx in 73, 74. No shit. Yeah, there was, was no fires. Was the... No fires back then. Right? Oh, no. Uh, no. 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 Yeah. What company were you with? In, 25 in engine, 58 truck on Tremont Ave. That was, was that a score in there? Yeah, there, there's a letter from uh, Captain Don Devine. He told me I could come down, but he said there'd be one problem, the interchange. No shit. Yeah. yeah. So uh, interchange, I didn't know what they meant, at that meant. I didn't care. I was going down, and I took a Greyhound bus, got off at the bus station. I didn't know what it was, and I took the subway, and I'm lost. I don't know where I am. I'm going to the South Bronx. That's all I knew. So I popped up out of a subway station. I said to the woman in the window there, the ticket saw, I says, How, where's Tremont Ave? Where's the firehouse? She looked at me like, what? This is the firehouse on Tremont Ave. I don't know. And she's the exit's over there. So I went up and I'm walking. And I got a, a military duffel bag over my shoulder with my gear and stuff in it. So I'm, I'm walking. I says, I'm, I'm going to hitchhike. I don't know where I am. <laughs> I'm hitchhiking. This yellow cap picks me up. He goes, what are you doing? Hitchhiking in the Bronx? <laughs> yeah, I didn't What's know. What's the matter for you in the Bronx? Yeah. I'm from Maine. We have yeah. wolves that chase us, not people. Why are you from Maine? Nobody's going to recognize. Nah, you're going to blend in there, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Might have some wolves chasing you in the Bronx back then. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm hitchhiking, and he gave me a ride. He didn't even charge me. He brought me. He says, here, just get out and get in there. So I got in, and that's when I met the guys. I was on the engine, and then the truck. I rode between them, but I basically stayed on the, the engine uh, while I was there. I was there three and a half, four days. Then I went back to Maine. And they made sure I got back to Maine because one of the guys took me on the subway to the bus station and made sure I got on the bus. The brothers, say eh? yeah. yeah. Just, so you, just so you know, that still happens today. You cannot walk around the Bronx. <laughs> well, guess what? I didn't it didn't change much. It didn't change much. <laughs> didn't change much. Yeah. yeah, I'm dealing with the wolves and shit up here. I'm done with that place. <laughs> what did they have back then? A Mac? You yep, they had a Mac. When I rode on the truck uh, a couple times, and it was at Seagraves Tiller. Open cab. Uh-huh. And then they, they made their cabs. They enclosed it and stuff. But it was on a Mac, yeah. Uh, and, uh, did it was you great. Any work in those three days? What's that? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, we stand out front of the house one night. One afternoon, it was it was in an afternoon, and the doors had the bells. You know, ding 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 ding. As the door went up, so the doors coming up. And I look over, and the cat comes. With you, Let's go. Where? He goes. Look around the corner. I looked around the corner. There's fire blowing on the top two floors of a, a tenement down the street. <laughs> and I go, holy shit! You know, we're there. Was it vacant? Mostly. Vacant. Yeah, it was vacant. Yeah. yeah, a lot of burnout vacant buildings around the station. So, were you taking pictures? What were you doing for the most part? No, I didn't didn't, know. I was just riding with them and, you know, hanging, working with them. Yeah. yeah, I didn't really, I I got inside a few times, but, um, you know, did you get the pipe, Dana? What the fuck? No, no, I I did that in Providence when I was was right in there with those guys, you know. But I I got got inside a few times, you know, and, uh, but I was going up to Detroit. Huh? Did you ever go up to Detroit? I know guys no, are doing that. No, up there. I never went out there at Devil's Night. No, I never made that. But uh, no, New York, I had that good experience there. Then it was a guy, Teddy Goldfarb. Did you ever guys hear him? He I just a, heard that name last week. Somebody said yeah. that for me. Yeah, he came uh, up and I went down a road with him when he was a battalion or a uh, deputy. I don't remember what he was doing. But, you know, he was a good guy. He, he talked a lot and taught us stuff. And, 
You know, you're like a sponge, just taking it all in, man. Everything. Oh, I'll tell you, riding in New York is where I really started learning stuff. Um, the guys were great because uh, you know here's this guy from Maine, you know, and that was you know I got my balls busted. I mean, I walked through. How'd you get here? I said, it's a Greyhound bus. You didn't take a stagecoach? I go, no. <laughs> How long did it take you? Four days? I go, no. About six hours. So. And it started. So I just jumped in with it, you know, and had fun with it. Of course. That means they liked you. Yeah, yeah. well, I, they taught me a lot, though, because I never heard of trenching a roof. Never heard of that. And uh, and I go, you know, I'm from Maine. We got all these fog tips. And these guys, Christ, they don't have any of that modern stuff. They got all straight bore. Well, you know, then they explained to me in the tenements, you know, the railroad apartments going room to room, how they had to knock it down with the with the fog. It just created that steam blanket. You couldn't move through it. Mm. So it made a lot of sense. And then the trenching, I, I used to I put that into my um, my notes when I taught. And it was funny because uh, we were talking about trenching one day and it was the college. And uh, one of the kids was uh, he's a Lewiston fireman now. His name is Justin Sink or something. I think he's a lieutenant in Lewiston, but he was in the call company up there, and they had a fire in a, it was a kind of a historic building and, uh, you know, attached to a barn and this and that. And they had a fire in the barn, and, you know, he pulled in, and the chief's giving these orders out, and the kid says, hey, hey, no, no, we got to trench the L. And the chief, well, what are you talking He says, this is the way we do it. They trench the L, they save the house. No oh, shit. And he come to school and he says, hey, that trenching really works. I says, I know. Oh, what do you think they're doing it for? Yeah. You just got to get it before it jumps. Yeah. Yeah. And up here, we don't have the manpower. Like, you guys ride heavy down there. Up here, all heavy. our companies are riding three guys in Portland. That's even what we're all that guys. We don't what, do what is, with Give us a little uh, insight into the uh, into the fire department there. How many how many firehouses? How many engines, trucks? Or all right. When I, when I came with? in. When I came in, we had uh, eight engines, four ladders, a rescue, a fireboat, and an airport station. And that was early 70s, about 300 guys. And we had uh, nine houses. That was, yeah, that's Bram Hall. That's where I worked up on engine four. We were big into the wards there in the late 70s and early uh, 80s. Those trucks, I loved them. Those things, you could, you could, and that last one, the last engine's a ward maxim. So it wasn't the ladder, but those trucks really were good, dependable. Uh, they didn't break down much, and uh, you could really, really move them. Is that firehouse still there? Yeah, yeah. This Well, they, they decommissioned Engine 4. So now what they're running up here in, in the city, where we had, uh, you know, eight engines, four ladders. Now they got four engines, one ladder, three oh, quints, shit. three quints, which rob everything. You know, I used to tell a guy when he was up here, the salesman, trying to sell him. Kept quiet. I says, no, they're squints. He goes, no, they're quints. Why do you call it a squint? I says, you got to squint to see what it is coming down the road. It ain't an engine and it ain't a ladder. How do they operate? Like yeah. shit. You can't, you know, you get two trucks, right? You get two pieces. You need a ladder out back. You need an engine out front. Mm. Well, well, how do they pull up? How do they get designated? Whatever well, the they come in as, they, when they first did, they came in as a quint. That's central. That was back in the that, That's one of them right there? No, no, it's a, it's oh. a combination ladder engine. Yeah, I, I don't think I'll I find I'll find a better picture of it. Yeah, but um, no, nah, I was never a fan of. So them. how do they know what they're designated when they pull up? I mean, does well, if they were first due, they have signed off as an engine. No you shit. Know, if they were second due or whatever, it depend on what you know when they got there. Can you operate the engine? Let's say they pulled up as an engine, and this all of a sudden as they're ready to start stretching or whatever, somebody. Shows up at the top floor. Can they use the ladder and the yeah. engine at the same time? Yeah, there was a oh. platform the operator was supposed to stand on in case the ladder came into contact or anything. He had a platform he could stand on. So that he might have been bad. Around. But you can't do it with three guys. Yeah. And right. That was the funny part. The city council, when they sold the idea, you guys will never go under four men on these trucks. Well, the city councils come and go all the time. The firemen stay there for 25 years or better. And, and they just get, you know, and I always said, we got hacked. You know, when you went from a couple houses had an engine and a, and a ladder in it, now you just got a quint. You went from six guys to four guys, and now you're down to three guys. That includes the officer and the chauffeur? That's it. Wow. One guy. <laughs> yeah. How many guys kid? show up on a call? What's that? You get a, for a fire, how many? How, what do you run to a phone, phone call? Oh, uh, a fire. A, a desk, we call it a desk box. It would be three engines, two ladders, and a rescue. 
And you know, how many guys are on the job total now? Uh, total now is like 228, I think. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's including five ambulances now, too. Back when I went in, we did the ambulances wow. just started coming in. There was civilian, but now they've incorporated into the fire department itself. We got 200 guys in a, in a firehouse, for God's sake. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. And that's sure. the thing, you know, I mean, and we got some pretty good sized buildings there. And we got a lot of wood frame. If you look at Portland, it looks like a small Boston. Mm. It's got did, the they, did they go through the same thing, Dana, without getting too far ahead? Did they go through the same thing, like war year type things in the 70s? Or... In Portland? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We were burning. We had fires, you know, two or three a night some nights. You know, uh, it got really, you know, it was busy. Do most, like if there's a job, how many of the how many firehouses are there? Like actually, there's, there's actually seven firehouses with companies, and then we got the fire boat, and then we got the airport. And what it was is, you know, you had seven houses, and uh, you know, we could handle up to a third alarm. And now they get a, a, a second alarm, and the city's basically stripped. So, what do I do? They, they mutual, mutual, aid. mutual aid, yeah, there's our fire boat. That, it's a that's the old one, that was the good one, the newer one's uh, smaller. That was a 7,000 gallon minute pump. The catch any lobsters off of that? Uh, lobster. <laughs> lobster. <laughs> it's getting busy. Yeah. <laughs> lobster. Yeah. So uh, let me see where you get. You get appointed November 16, 75, right? To go yeah. on the pay department. <clears throat> where did you go? To, it lists a whole bunch of companies. Yeah. Like you were everywhere. Where did you go to right out of? How long is the academy in? Uh, the. Well, back then, guess what? <laughs> we were hiring us one at a time. That was the whole thing. I I was due to get hired when I turned 21, which is in February. I got a call from the chief. He says, Dana, this is Chief uh, Dodd. He says, I I'm still hiring you. And I go, okay. He goes, but the city just put a hiring freeze on. I go, so what's that mean? He goes, we can't hire anybody until they take the freeze off. So I had nine more months to wait. I just kept riding, you know, I just, uh -huh. you know, I liked it, you know, and, but it was great when I got my first paycheck. It was like Christmas. Oh, morning. I get paid for this too. What? Yeah, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, right, so you had no probing school. You just go, you get, you, no, they do now. Yeah. I taught a lot of them. I was in them teaching a lot. Of but them. when you were there, when you got, uh, we went there. in, we did a test, you know, they had a two week, yeah. Uh, way back then they had a two week drill school. Right. And you did it for your first two years. You went down to the drill tower and you did ladders, you did stretches, you did all the, you know, the basic fundamentals. Right. But not like it is today, not like the academies where they come in and they, they really, I got to admit that we had some good guys in there, you know, organizing these uh, academies and these guys got some good training. I think that's across the country, right? Just talking to guys. I mean, that's yeah. happening. To, yeah. That's pretty regular now, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, so, I, but, I, been hanging around there for so long too i mean i knew the game and uh you know but there was always something to learn you know i had some good guys in there some good mentors and stuff like that you had a good gig too oh yeah <laughs> everybody needs a gig yeah <laughs> great you know hell yeah so where did you go uh, what was your first company that you went to was it i went to engine place? three a lot of three i stayed out there for a very short time then i went to engine six and I hung out there for a while. And that was at Bram Hall's Engine 6, Engine 4, and Ladder 6. And then I got transferred over to uh, Engine 4. That's where I really started, you know, staying around permanently. And then I went to Engine 5 and then back to Engine 4. And, you know, those the, the stats in there that I sent you, the timeline, it, you know, they were short, short stays. You know, oh. but they transferred us around all the time until we got the bid system. That, that came at the towards the end of my. Oh, career. so then you could put in for your where you wanted to actually go and stay. Yeah, that that my seniority, which was good. Back gotcha. back in the day, they screwed with you. They knew if you didn't like a place, they put you in, like that fireboat. I didn't really want to work down there, but I got sent down there. So, hey, the, the fireboat is. Uh, I mean, it's that I, I don't. I don't think I've been. I've been to Maine a few times. I don't think I've ever been in Portland. That's uh, like it's right underwater. Is uh, oh yeah, yeah going we, got on. A, we got a deep river that comes in a natural river. I mean, we had some big tankers coming in. It was a you know oil tanking farm down there. We got a lot of cruise ships that come in here now, and you know, we got a good sized waterfront too. So uh, you know, so where did you wind up staying the longest then? Probably on engine four, and then the rescue. Oh, it says eight years. Yeah, yeah. I was at engine four, then I went to the rescue. I did shot stint on the island there. We had an island station, and that that was that was different. You were by yourself. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that. So you, it, it, 
you go over a bridge, I would imagine, to get to this island. No, you took a boat. <laughs> you took a boat to get to no, this island. A boat. Yeah, we took down, it was one of those, uh, oh, what do they call them, the rafts there. We had a raft where the fireboat would take us down, drop us off. We kind of worked our own thing. We'd go down for two days and come back for six. There were four of us down there. That's probably a wicked piss over there. Oh! oh. Yeah. Hey, you don't have any help. You don't have any help coming. I mean, if they're coming, right, they're so coming on the up. boat. You're the only guy working that night. Or yeah. That two days. Shift that, yeah. And what do you have? What what apparatus? I had an old, it was an American La France. <laughs> dual booster cab. <laughs> uh, it was open cab. It was a shit box, okay? You don't have a picture of it, do you? you no. Say, okay, no. I want to make sure. I was looking. For, okay. No, I, I, I'd be embarrassed. You know, I did that once. They put us on a reserve piece. Remember that the uh, Gong show there? The yeah, I know comic yeah, yeah. with the paper bag on his head. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. We were riding yeah, around yeah. in the shit box with the plants so. <laughs> with the paper bag. I, I put the that. paper bag on with yeah, the eyes. Yeah, and yeah, I on it. That was the unknown fireman there. It's like a jet fan. For God's yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> oh, was How many you know? people lived on the island? Was it? A- well, that no, that was uptown. Now down on the island. We got we got one of the old wards down there because that thing was it it was not dependable. Right. Was it populated? Was that? Oh yeah, people? yeah. They were selling it. Million dollar condos down there and stuff. So you had one firehouse with one apparatus with you one. You had guy. an ambulance and an engine. And whatever came in, you got it. Yeah. I, I can't believe I'm hearing what I'm hearing. Don't oversleep. Right? Oh, Mr. Run or something. Oh, oh no, no. no. You know, it may do you good. Wow. Uh, they had some fires down there, but not until we get, you know, when we got down there, we had runs, you know, alarms going off, stuff, you know, silly stuff, medical stuff. But they had some major fires down there because they were taking us. It was an old military base from World War II, and they converted into condos and stuff. And they had they had a couple big fires down there. Always so the you federal for any always of them? Sucked, right? Uh, I, no, I didn't go to. No, so I was. T- 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 tell me how this works. You pull up. <laughs> you're the you're the officer. You're the chauffeur. You got the pipe. You got the backup. You're doing it all. And the irons. You got a, you got a, yeah. You got a megaphone and, and you got a radio. How's that? <laughs> what I did is I I kind of was some kids from New Jersey. There was a couple brothers and a sister, and they they were teenagers. And I I saw them one day out dubbing around. I says, Hey, you guys, uh, you ever think about being firemen? No. Why? I says, Well, I might need some help. So I got them so they could dress a hydrant. We had hydrants on the thing. And I got it so they could at least pull a line. <clears throat> well, and, you know, that's... that's... Yeah, cool. Imagine when it's 20 below. And yeah, you're no. Oh, we weren't there in the winter. Oh, no. We out of there. They had no fire <laughs> protection? No, the they had volunteers, but not oh, many. Oh, my God. So, you know, and uh, it I was, guess you really went right to the exposures when something was burning. You didn't even well, know. Before you know it, everything was burning. So, <laughs> yeah. um, you no, know, it's an abandoned did you ever, island. Did you ever see the movie The Shining with Jack Nicholson? Yeah, of yes. course. Okay, it was kind of like Johnny. that. Everybody you know, goes home. The scary part is you're looking at the mirror. I'm not talking, but the mirror is talking to me. I knew it was time to get out of there. It was, it was crazy shit. <laughs> so when you pull up to a job, you're like, what should I do here, Lou? I don't know. Maybe you should stretch the eyes. You have the eyes. All right, I got the eyes. You had the, you had great the job. Great attitude. job. Good yeah. job. Yeah. Get a good job. Good job, man. You know, get the attaboy sticker on your helmet. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Attaboy, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I was lucky. We didn't catch any fires when we were down there for that summer. And it kind of got... You know, it was a sales pitch. They were going to get him a quint, and there was going to be three guys. It was just, you know, it never worked. And the rest of you men come Is with it me. Still there? <laughs> no. The firehouse ain't that's funny, Joe. It, it's still there, but I don't know who I don't know who's doing any of the stuff down there. Dude, the that's funny. That's freaking funny. And the rest <laughs> of you men come with me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could put mannequins on the truck or look good. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. There. You know what? You know what I went to ask you, Dana? What? What's Back in the day, what was the busiest company there? What was the main place that everybody wanted to work? That was if, if that was even a thing. Engine five and then engine four. Those were the two busiest because engine five was down in the uh, like the city setup is the east end, the west end, and then is downtown, and that's where Central was. And there was engine five, ladder one, and uh, they, they were busy because they were down Bayside. I mean Parkside down Bayside. Excuse me, down Kennedy Park area. There was a lot of fires and. You know, back then it was like everywhere else in the country. It was, was it vacant too. Oh, there was vacants, yeah, yeah, a lot of vacants. Yeah, and you know we had the usual dumpsters, cars, you know, a lot of that stuff. But uh, it was kind of funny because back in that day, it was the houses were worth more burning than they Ooh. were standing because of the insurance. 
Yeah. Oh, and that, that was something that, you know. Yeah, we talk about that a lot. Yeah. The, the property was worth more burnt down than it was, uh, you know, standing. So, yeah. A lot of fires. A lot of awesome. A lot of awesome. So, who, who was one of the guys, uh, like when you first were getting on the job? I like to ask this question. Who was somebody that you remember that was kind of influential, you know, to get you through your career, start of your career? Well, yeah, he's, he's a good friend of mine. His name was is Don Whitney. He was a lieutenant. When I started riding, you know, he had just got promoted, and I was riding with him. I think it was Engine 4, or I met him in Engine 5. I can't remember. And, you know, he, he kind of a dry sense of humor guy. And, I, you know, he was very stern and serious. And I kind of talked to him. And he, so he came up to me one of the first times there. He says, uh, so you're a callman from South Poland, huh? And I go, yeah, proud of you, you know. And he goes, let me tell you, I'd rather have a sister that's a call girl than a brother that's a call man. <laughs> well, I know where I stood there. So I said, oh, boy, here we go. But no, we begin. became good friends. We worked a lot of fires together on Engine 4 and Engine 5. And the guy taught me a lot. You know, he was he was right into the job. He came out of the Navy, and he got a job there. And he's real good. One of my mentors, one of my good friends. And he was an author. He wrote uh, three or four different books. I don't know if you've heard of them. One was called Black and Shield. He did a little history book first. And he did the, the Lou and then uh, Fire Duty. And then him and my buddy that's a historian in there at the museum is... Uh, Mike Dacey, they both wrote a book on the conflagration in uh, 1866, which is interesting. That was one of the first conflagrations in America before any of the others. And that kind of got ISO formed to start raiding cities. Yeah, right there, there's the conflagration. Yeah, so let's talk. I was, we were going to get into this. I wanted to talk well, about this a little bit. So give us a little, uh, just well, a quick the, the rundown. Well, started uh, on the 4th in the afternoon. It was a hot summer afternoon, July 4th. And... Um, you know, the crowd was in town. It was a lot of people. They had a an air uh, balloon tethered, you know, people going to, they had an elephant in town. It was all sorts of stuff. It was big, you know, party atmosphere. And it's, it hadn't rained much and the city was dry. And this is something prior to that, the chiefs or the department engineers wanted the city to get an alarm system in a water system. They didn't have any of that. They rang church bells. They had fire districts. So they'd ring the church bells. And the people would count the bells and know the fire was in that district. And that's the way they would head. And uh, you go way back. Um, I'll start even back before that when Portland was first, you know, formed. Everybody was in the fire brigade and they had fire buckets. We've got a hell of a collection of buckets. And on them, they were company buckets or personal buckets that belonged to the people uh, that lived in the city. I mean, there was a small area. It was the peninsula, basically. And... Um, the number of chimneys or number of fireplaces you had in your home dictated the number of buckets you would have. Wow. So if you had three chimneys, you had three buckets, and the fire warden would come around. Yeah, that, that's the outcome. No water. and uh, wow. wow. And it started with firecrackers. That's what started. Yeah, I was saying July 4th, so they were yeah. celebrating the uh, 4th of July, obviously. Yeah. Right? And, and there's a picture there back in one of the first ones, the railroad tracks and all that. Um, well, I'll just show you. Uh, you see the tents there, the tent city? The fire burned over 1,500 buildings and displaced 10,000 people. 1,500 buildings? Yeah. That was a tent city. And they got the Civil War just ended, so they, they brought these tents up. They asked the Union Army for help, and they sent the tents up by train, and they sent all the cooking facilities that they would have at these battlegrounds, you know, to feed the troops. And they sent that stuff up, so these people stayed in the tents. How many people died? A lot of people. Uh, you know, when we first started doing the, my buddy there, Mike, the historian, uh, we thought there was two, but they've got it up to around four or five now. But well, it looks like an actual there. picture there. Yeah, that's the actual picture right there. Wow. That's what they were living in. How now, long were they displaced for? A uh, year or two. And, you know, finally they started rebuilding the city right off of bat, the bat again. But if you got that picture where the map is, you can see right there, that's the waterfront where it started and it burned up. To Munjoy Hill, they basically, you know, ran out of the populated area. But that tore right through. You know, three firehouses burned, all the banks, uh, all the printing offices. So it tore right through there. And they had guys from all over the state there. And the Boston Fire Department sent up thirty guys to relieve them. Uh -huh. That's what they would do in the old days. They would shut the rail lines down and the fire trains. They'd load equipment up and ship it right to the fire that they needed. So that was your, your mutual aid. 
Dude, it had to be cold as a bitch living in those tents in the winter. Oh, yeah. Holy crap. See, that's why I'm in a log cabin now. I moved yeah. out of the tent. And I, got a, I got a furnace here. <laughs> we'll just keep that straight. <laughs> Good for you, Dana. Don't take no shit off nobody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what other pictures you got before we jump to the rescue? Of that particular incident, those are what you have, right? Uh, I got I got some more of the uh, my I do the family shot. Remember the three of us? The let me bring it up that way we can uh, yeah make sure I have what we want to have. Uh, that was the one you went. It, it oh, I'm last. sorry. No, no, I got you. Stand by. I'm gonna bring. I, I was actually gonna try to bring this up. So yeah, you there it is, right there. Yeah, nice. That's my great grandfather, Walter F. Libby. He had 36 years. I had a little over 30, and my son's on the job now. He's got 11. Wow. That's you in the middle? Yeah. Man, you are you are all right, kid. Look at that mustache, bro, good, on, the, on the sun, on the right, man. What are you, was he born like that with that mustache? Yeah. Yeah. Just, how much is a feeling? How much time has he had, you said? My son, he's got 11 years on the job now. He's how up at Engine 6 out of Bram Hall. Engine 6? Nice. Yeah. Wow. Very Answering nice. the bell since 17. And that's, what is this here? Yeah. That's your grandfather on Great the grandfather engine? grandfather when he was the driver on the Come engine Come on. Two. Hold on a second. I think that we have you sent this photo separately, didn't you? Yeah, that was set. We get some other ones in there. Him on the. Oh, I just got bring because with with uh, with your pops there. I think it was uh, right up here, wasn't it? This one right here. That, that's him. That's the one. Yeah. Wow, that's what a great picture to have, man. I got that that's in the little shot, and we blew that up, and then I got him up at the stations. Right. You know, see the see the lanterns. Uh, the yeah. lanterns. You know, they all had the driver had one. The engineer had one, and, and it's funny when you give tours, people go, why'd they have these lanterns? Because they didn't have any electricity. <clears throat> they didn't have flashlights. Right. You know, and if you ever watch one of those steamers uh, pump, there's a lot of moving pots in there. You don't want to get your arms jammed in your hands. You'll lose mm -hmm. them. You know what's so, crazy is when you watch the old videos of those things with the horses. Flying right down there, the street. When they're yeah. flying down the street, man. Did you get the video I either. sent you? The YouTube video? With our, we've got a, a YouTube video. or well, we've got a DVD here. It's about 10 minutes, and it shows the horses responding and returning to the stations. Yeah, you know, so I, don't, I don't have it. If you want to try to email it to me, if we have some time later, we could try to watch a little bit of it if you want. Okay. Try to email it to me. I don't know. I'll have to get my producers in the other room. No, that's, all right. that's all right. Don't worry. Oh, no yeah. worries. That I could ship it, you know, uh, overnight yeah, yeah, express, well, but, you know. <laughs> we'll post it on a video. I'll, yeah. I'll give you my address, and then we'll post it to one of our videos. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll send you a copy, too. How's that? Awesome. I'll yeah, send yeah. you a hard copy. I'll get, I've got a couple. I got that, and I got one that they made in 1963 with the guys slamming around town on, you know, made-up calls and stuff, but it's pretty good. It's, uh, and it's somebody uh, who's this Portland, Maine fire me uh, memoirs, memories, memories. Ask Dana about the fox, Jimmy the oh, fox. Yeah. yeah, he's the guy we're going to talk about at the end. He was the the, uh, the kid with Down syndrome who hung out at Bram Hall from the day it opened until the day he died. Wow, you know, he was just he was one of our guys. You know, he was an honorary chief. Uh, he came to my wedding. He came to my retirement party. He was That's just good. one of the guys. You know, we could talk about him now if you want. I mean, yeah, yeah post them, post them up. Yeah, he's go. got a couple shots of him there. Yeah, we're gonna we'll do this one. This is a yeah, good there one. he is. He was there. He came in in the morning. He worked at Goodwill. Came in the morning and came home at the end of the day. Came down on the weekends, and uh, his 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 thing was when the nine o'clock bells rang at night, he was to go home. Well, one night he come down and he you know he couldn't say Dana, so he called me Wayna. He goes, Wayna, call Jack down. I want to scare him. So I says, Go ahead, go down to the bathroom and hide down there at the end of, by the watch desk. We well, went in there, and then we had a box hit. We come back, and another box hits, and we come back. Well, his father comes down. There he is, right there by engine four. And uh, his father comes down about nine ten, nine fifteen. He goes, "Hey, Dana, is Jimmy here?" I go, "Yeah." He, I looked. He's still in there, waiting for me to call Jack. <laughs> oh, Jesus! I go, he's down there. So out comes Jimmy. Where's Jack? <laughs> you know. So, but oh, he was a character. He used to have. Four birthdays at the house. Every shift gave him a birthday. And we uh, started hearing about it in September or October. And his birthday wasn't until December 12th. Uh -huh. And uh, he always got two cakes because he knew eventually he'd get his real cake. But every shift, like he'd get a balloon cake, he'd stick the knife in it, thing would blow up frost and his shit would go everywhere. <laughs> they, uh, the cakes went down the pole hole. Uh, he just, he, and he knew he always got another cake, but. Then one day he's coming home and he shows me this note. He goes, Wayne, I read this. I go, what is it? So it's now he's moved his uh, 
four birthdays down to Goodwill, and he's telling them down there he's got four. He's getting four parties down there too. So they really want to know what his birthday was, so we give him one party. You know, he's getting four from us, and he was just a good character. We had a lot of fun with him. Where did he? Where did he live? Right down a block from the fire. He lived up by the hospital. His father was a prominent pediatrician, hmm. and his brothers and sisters, you know, and they just, you know, how long? How long was he doing that for? Oh, he did it till he passed away. He passed away in uh, a few years back. I was in Germany, so I, I didn't get to. How, I was many, how many years was he doing it? Oh, shit. 66, uh, he had been there 25, 30 oh, years. Sure, I, wow. He was just there. He was part of the, he was, he was just the one of the guys. House, man. Yeah. Yeah, he just hung out with the guys, and, you know, he was one of the guys. And it was funny because one night they had a fire a couple doors down. It was a small one. And the guys on the crew said, uh, the captain, hey, captain, fire marshal's here. What they did is they ran him back over the station and put somebody's class A uniform on him <laughs> with a hat. So, you know, the smoke's clearing and shit. They go, the fire, she said, the Captain says, bring him up. And up comes Jimmy. He looked, he says, get him the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah. He was a he was a character. Good we, stuff. we loved him. We treat him like one of us. He was yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No doubt, man. I did what the t-shirt you? business in, in the in the city. I started doing the custom, you know, uh, job shirts and the in the company shirts. And he got when I first started, I did the IFF logo with professional firefighters, Portland, Maine, local 740. I only had two. I had one. He had one. <laughs> the guys are saying, where's our shirt? Yeah, he, got he was one. my best salesman. But he wore that everywhere. And everybody's wearing the shirt. So they all got <laughs> shirts eventually. But they didn't get theirs free. Jimmy did. Uh, <laughs> nice. They love to do the same with Gonzo. Give one of our shirts to wear around. That's what, you know. You gotta, uh, yeah. What's that question there? Uh, ask Dana if he has any connection to the old Len Libby store by Higgins Beach. No, that wasn't. I don't believe our family was uh, with the Len Libby. I remember going there because I used to. We used to stay out at the beach there. You know, we used to go by that place all the time. But there wasn't a Libby that was associated with us. Yeah, uh, gotcha. Okay, there you go, uh, Epics. Let's, let's talk about the rescue a little bit. So, you decide to go. What makes you decide to want to go over to Rescue One? Yeah, it was busy. It went citywide. Yeah. So I just, I, I wanted to be busy, you know. I go to like, every fire, Dana? Yeah, every fire in the city, you know, any car accidents. Um, that's me with Stevie Young and uh, Timmy Randall. This, the kid to the right there, uh, Stevie, he's the fire chief in Cape now. The, uh, we're all retired, as you see, you know. We're all gone now, but he's a Cape fire chief. Good guy. Those were good guys. And, and Timmy worked with me on the rescue for a while. How many did they run with the rescue? Two. Now they got three. They what? got a rescue like, oh, yeah, that's all we had. I mean, what the hell are you going to do with two guys? Drive past and wave, smile and wave. Get there. <laughs> Get there. Basically what we did is we got there wherever they needed us. They needed search and rescue. We did that. We would just kind of like to fill in extras. But we right. did all the extrication in the city and, you know, any, any different stuff. We had all the tools. So all the toys. It looked like a fairly new uh... – Rescue rig. Well, the, the new one now. I didn't get a picture of that new one. It's a big. It's big like the uh, yards in New York. It's one of those big ones. But you know, it's it's something that I try to talk to up here. You know, people say, "Oh, they got new trucks. They got new stations." We got nobody on them. I'd rather have an old station, an old truck loaded with guys. Yeah, hell yeah, man. You know? hell yeah. That that was that was that was the second one. Oh, okay. I just took a short That's chair. good. I like that rig, man. That's yeah, nice. it was good. It was it was small. We could get it around town. You know, we had a cascade system. Uh, small. No, we just carried bottles on that one. The other one, we had a cascade system on. So, you know, it was uh, it was good truck to work off of. <laughs> QCB said, how many guys can we fit in the fire building? At least two more. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very That's true. All you got. <laughs> That's all you got is right. Holy shit. I mean, Teddy, Teddy Goldfarb caught a fire with us one night. He was up here and he was at the station talking. We had a box or uh, a fire up on the hill and he jumped on. I got a picture of it somewhere. It's in there. Um, and he uh, he rode up with the engine and he watched and he, he was kind of amazed. He goes, well, you know, what you guys have got, you guys do all right. He goes, in New York, we just keep calling, and they keep coming. And coming, keep yeah. coming. You know, up here, we run out now after kill it with we work in fire second we long. We kill it with manpower, man. You know, uh, that's, you know, all the big cities do. You know, you got Boston's the same way. Well, why do, you, why do you think, I mean, is the city that, like, why wouldn't they have 
I mean, how much money could it cost them to to have two or three extra guys a shift or something? You know what I mean? Like how? I mean, I don't get it. They just kept cutting because they get away with it. They get away with it, you know. And you know what I hate to hear is any fireman say, "Well, we don't have that many fires." Well, guess what? It only takes one to fix one. That's life. it. You earn your money for the whole year. The you whole can year, earn your money one for fire. one job. I say that all the time, man. Yeah, it takes one fire. It can screw somebody's life up. It can screw your, 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 your one of your guys up. So I don't go for that. Oh, we don't have that many fires. It just takes one. That's all. One no, fire. I agree. I agree. <clears throat> I know some cities can't get people to take the job, too. Oh, right, Ruff? When I was up here, you know, in Portland, when I took the test, 800 people. Yeah. You know what they have now? They have 75, 100. Applied. What? That's yeah. crazy. I don't think they even give the civil service test. Turn a resume in. You know, if you've got your... Well, now it's like an test. open test now. It's like an open thing. Well, yeah, but they don't have that many people applying. That's crazy. Yeah. Somebody else just told us the same thing. I don't remember where it was. They can't get guys to take the no. job. No, you know, you know, no, it's uh, not as popular as it used to be. Like I said, it's a little struggle for us to uh, to get some people to apply. They want the easy way out. You know, they want yeah. the, they want you basically to say, "Here's your gear, get on the truck." Yeah. They don't want to go through the process of getting the yeah. job. Well, the process with me was a long time because I wasn't old enough, and I take the test, go to civil service uh, review. And they say, you're not old enough. Come back when you're old. So I took the test again. I came back in. You're not old enough. You'll get a job. And then the third time I came in, they said, get out of it. We're not even giving you an interview. You've got to be 21. And you turn 21, and you'll get the job. And I did. So it was just, right. I just, I would have gone to work as soon as I could. Yeah. And now with an associate degree, they'll take you at 20. So I had all those years just waiting to get in there. Wow. How many guys were t- took our job, Ruffy? I mean, took what? the test. 30,000? Yeah, something yeah. like that. 30,000 to make. 3,000. Yeah. Now, a couple of kids I had in school are down there on the job. Um, they work down there now. It's, that's the best part about teaching is these kids, I, you know, I taught for 34 years over at the college. And to see these kids now, it's, they're all over the place, New York, Boston, Portland, all the local departments. And you know how it is now. Some of them are even chiefs. And I'm going, holy shit. Either they yeah. shot up or I'm getting older, and it's, it's the latter of the two. I'm getting older, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then when they start retiring, when you got them in recruit school and they're retiring now, I'm going, Whoa, <laughs> stop the clock. That, that was Baltimore, Coops. Jimmy Ward said that was Baltimore. Where I forget who we had on that said they can't get people to work over there either, man. Right. Uh, that's right. Oh, the captain. It was the captain who had the heart attack on the apparatus floor. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Well, he was Gosh, we got some, uh, some fire pictures in there. Let's. I was gonna say, thank you for. Okay, well, let's. Do you want to look at his lid real quick? Mm. That one there, I don't think you get the picture of the receipt. But you know what I paid for that helmet back in '72? I paid twenty nine dollars and change with a dollar (laughs) ten shipping from Massachusetts, thirty one dollars. Oh, I saw that. I saw that. That 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 receipt. receipt. I saw it. I saw it. Thirty one bucks. Oh yeah, yeah, I do. I think. Uh, yeah, it's in here. That's. But that's. You know, you can't even get those leather helmets now. No, price is five. They're they're a thousand bucks now. Yeah, Ruffy, how many kids do we see walking around the trade shows? Oh my god, thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If they could get them. Ooh, that was a it? that was a, 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 fi- a bad fire there. So where was, where are you working here? Where is this? I was on the rescue. That was up on St. Lawrence Street. That was in the January, and it came in as basically it was a kitchen fire, and uh, you know that thing went to shit real fast. We got it knocked down, and it got in the pipe chase and went up to the second floor. And what happened is I was working on the rescue, and we got in there, and I you know we got it knocked down, and I had the the leather boots then, and was before they put the vibrant soles on so when we were outside it was miserable trying to move around it was all you've been better off for hockey. Slipping? yeah yeah you're slipping all over the place out. right and after that the ones without the grips right they just had like a yeah. little gouge in it right or something yeah, yeah. And they were bad horrible. And, um you know that that we thought we had it knocked down and you know everybody was kind of you know getting hey it's you know then i went up the second floor and i saw this burnt stuff on a washer and inside a dryer and i go okay now i went up to the third floor and I got up there, and I, I didn't have my tools or anything, so I, I took down a, a vinyl Phoenician blind, and there was a scuttle, and I sh- popped up the scuttle and shoved that up there, and I brought it down, and it was melted. I said, we're in the shit. Now, this is traveling all up. Mm. And, uh, a couple guys were up there, and uh, Bill Nowicki, uh, he, he was a lieutenant, and I remember when the, the stairwell kind of, the ceiling collapsed. It was one of those that went in, 
took a hard left and went up into the third floor, and that came down on him, and he uh, he got him out. Then I went up, and there's two guys up there, and I didn't know to go left or right, so I stayed at the top of the stairs, you know, kind of hunkered down, just yelling to him to get him to get to come to the voice, and then we got down, and we had a halogen. I punched a hole. Here you see fire coming out of the light sockets and uh, the, you know, the walls <laughs> when they're coming when the fire's coming up through the radiator holes it's uh, yeah you know we, you didn't, we didn't do so good there yeah. yeah yeah was he uh was he yelling to get a second lead out to the guy over here the uh, i don't know what he was doing i'm not <laughs> sure that was a third i ended up being a third alarm that was on cumberland ave we had a couple nice. fires in that building they just got it done they, you know they're rehabbing it and uh oh that's a nice one too guys. yeah they get they got that cooking yeah, I like that mansard roof. Is that mansard? Yeah, mansard. Yeah, look at that thing, man. Yeah, she was blowing. Yeah. And that, I think it might have been that fire or the – if it was that, not that one, it would have been another one where the power lines burned off and came across the first two engines. Well, you so do the, have some pretty good power lines here. So yeah, in the power right lines, there. and that engine was dead. Nobody could work off it. You know, the driver was sitting in it. He couldn't move. No and shit. CMP yeah. came and, you know, Central Main Power came and killed the power. But that, that was a good one. I mean, you guys must be dealing with the – with the weather, I mean, we were making fun of you, but I mean, that's got to be a long. I mean, we have winters here in New York, and I'm sure Boston, but I'm, I would imagine you guys get it the worst, right? Yeah, we get we get some pretty good nor'easters up here and stuff, and it gets cold. That's uh, Washington Ave. That was a fatal fire. Somebody went in there and put the gas to the building. Oh shit! Sure. Uh, that's Engine Eleven. I'm on the deck gun, and the reason I'm on the gun is because I came. Yeah, we went out back, and there's so many guys, and I looked down the street and. My the guy, the historian there, Mike Dacey, was driving. He says, Let's get this gun going. I got up there, you know, the buildings all around, the siding was starting to melt and they were starting to smoke. And you know, we had a lot of fire there. That's we didn't do so good, move, bro. Yeah, yeah. 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 Gun's a good heads up move, man. Yeah. No, I didn't do much. Yeah, I'm sure. You want to do some articles? I, got I want to do it. Yeah, I want to do the uh, the city hall stuff. I was reading okay. that the city hall. Uh, now, uh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that was a that was a summer fire. Um, we were sitting on the bench. We're directly across the street at Central, and we were sitting on the bench. And I see the smoke. And first, it looked like it was coming out of a chimney. I go, "What the hell are they running the boiler for? Christ, it's eighty five degrees." What they were doing is replacing the roof. And that's the oh. roofing materials got going. Mm. You know, so we, we called it into the uh, fire alarm. We told him we got a fire across the street. So we took off some guys blowing his horn. Hey, hey. When I'm running over to get on the truck, I go, what? He goes, there's a I says, no shit. That's where we're going. <laughs> well, hey, thanks for the get news. the hell out of news the way. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Dr. Uh, Captain Obvious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, it didn't do so, so much. So hold on. Look at that picture first. Look at that picture. Right. You see where the steeple is? And yeah. where the fire is. Yeah. And now look at the next picture. We didn't do it so good there either, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, you know, it was all on the roof, a lot of roofing material, but it. Thank God for the roofers and the pipe sweaters. Did you, right? yeah, yeah, no business. And the cigarette butts. <laughs> yeah, cigarette you know? Did you save the steeple? <laughs> yeah, that, that city hall, it burnt a couple times. But that, they, they still worked in there. I mean, it burnt. A couple of two, three times? 1908, it burnt because uh, the fire alarm office was in and it wasn't manned at night and they thought it started in the fire alarm and it burnt city hall down that time in 1908 oh shit yeah. So, yeah so those were the two you had for uh, city hall right and i want to see that, that was picture it. With him yeah. with the food he had the one with the food oh uh, yeah let me get that was right there you go yeah, that's when i was cooking <laughs> Mange. I, was, I was the cook that was uh italian meatloaf pizza meatloaf pizza oh, meatloaf tell pizza me what, this, what yeah. is this pizza meatloaf well, it's it's you know hamburger. You put pizza sauce in it, and onions and peppers and cheese and oh, a little Italian meatloaf. Yeah, a lot of meatloaf. Yeah, that's right. What company was that? There, that was Engine Four. It was on Engine Four. <laughs> yeah, we did. Uh, you know the guy I was telling you about, Don Whitney. When he retired, uh, he was up at Engine Six, and I was still on Engine Four. And I did homemade stuffed shells for his retirement supper. We had about a hundred guys show up. We stuffed five hundred and oh my god! I think shells. Holy shit! Yeah, we had two kitchens going. I think that's the. Uh, is that the only food article you have? I yeah, have stuffed shells okay. in a long time. Yeah. Uh, who doesn't love stuffed shells? Ravioli's lasagna. Oh, <clears throat> stuffed shells is one of my favorite. I think. Yeah, a lot of good. My wife, my wife yeah. makes some mean ziti for an Asian woman. <laughs> yeah, if you get back to a couple of those old shots, uh, the station, uh, Mundre Hill. Okay, the, that's that's yeah. There, that's Munjoy Hill on the right, top right yeah, here. The top right, 
And that's where my great grandfather worked. There's a couple other shots if you got it. Wow, hold on. Look at what is that thing? What is that building? That's the front yeah. the tower? territory. Oh. And that so, was built way back. So they used to get to the top there and look for fires? Is that what that No, no, was? it was built for the shipping industry because Portland had a, a natural, you know, deep water uh, port. And what it was back in the day, they'd fly flags to let the people know in the city what ships were coming in and the longshoremen, if they belonged to that shipping line. They would fly their flags and they would go down mm -hmm. and unload the ships. Is that building still there today? That no, they they tore that down. There's a firehouse there, but uh, ah, what a shame. Uh, that, we, I worked out of that. That's where my great grandfather worked. I worked. Oh, so out you were able to work in that? Business. Yeah, I worked out there a few times. Yeah, ah, that's cool, dude. How yeah. awesome is that? That you're walking around thinking to yourself where where your grandfather was walking. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's the best. If you can find the other shot, it's better of it. Um, oh, I, know okay. I, did, I sent a couple into that. Mm, 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 mm. I, I don't think it went to the bottom. Let me look at the bottom here really quick because maybe that didn't make it. No, it probably didn't then. Yeah, that, that, that was the only the, I tried, the only ones were kept together up top there that yeah. I had with the horses. I mean, that, there oh, it is right it. there. There it is. Okay, right. that's him on the steamer. Wow. Okay, he's the driver. Well, yeah, was, yeah, I believe that's – and the boy standing there in the white shirt, that was his son, Ed. Let me go that back was the son of, he mm -hmm. ended up being a trolley, uh, a trolley driver in the city. Wow. And I remember talking to him. I was young, but, you know, he would talk about the old, and, and he knew all these guys up there. He would talk about them, and, you know, and I was very young. And oh, there he, he is. Knew, he knew all of them. Yeah, there he is standing there on the street. Yeah, I was looking for it. I wanted to kind of yeah, zoom in. Yeah, there he is. That's it. So, wow. That's, that's too bad that that yes. built, you know, you don't see it. Oh, it was a beautiful building. building. Yeah, it was. Even that observatory. Oh, yeah. my God. The observatory is still there. Oh, it is there. Oh, yeah. You that's can you can climb up. Awesome. You, you come up to Paul and you can go up there and you can look over the whole city. What were wow. they What were they running out of that firehouse when you were there? Uh, when I was up there, it originally ran one engine. And when they closed Central for a short period of time, we were running uh, two engines and, and a ladder up there. Yeah. Okay. But they yeah, tore it down. The, what what year did you, your grandfather die? He died in 47. He retired in 26. Oh, okay. So you, you never got a chance to talk to him about the That's fire. That's crazy story. that he retired in 26, yeah, dude. Yeah. That's a fire right there. That's when I was talking with the chiefs and stuff. Um, right there. That was a third alarm. We was that yeah, it was a third. And I broke my hand that night at that fire, and I, I didn't even I worked all night. And uh this men, 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 Dana. What's that? It's when men were men, brother. Yeah, well, it was so goddamn cold, you couldn't feel your hands anyway. So <laughs> that was I think it's broken. Spot. It, and I don't know if you got the other shots of that. No, because I had a three-shot series. Yeah, that, uh, this, there was, okay, that ladder with the truck. Uh, the next picture, beside that one, that's that's another picture. And I had a that was a good-sized building. And then I was going to say that's a big building, man. Yeah, and there was one more shot where I went through an apartment to the right of it, and the fire was blowing out the back, and then they passed me a two and a half up. And see. then when I charged, they charged the line, I opened the line up and it, it grabbed my thumb, knocked my helmet off. My helmet went about 30 feet. In the so I, I want to hold on, go back up. So I put, I thought this was Dana on the, the, the turntable there. So I made yeah. that the thumbnail. But then I saw, <coughs> I think it was somebody, Greg, you said it was? Yeah, Greg Barnes. He's passed away. He was a good guy. He was on ladder one. He looks pretty calm there. <laughs> yeah. We can handle it two and two. The rest yeah, of he was, he was a good guy. <laughs> two and two, because that's what we're getting. <laughs> yeah, that's all, you, that's all you're getting. <laughs> that's when I was uh, taking my physical agility test. The guy on the stairs. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. You guys look brandy new on that one. Yeah. 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 Okay, there's the, that picture right there. Stop right there. The one with the, the guy standing around, the one to the right. Gurney. Here? Hey. Yeah. That's Gofab was riding with us that night. That poor guy there, the fire was in his apartment. He dove through the window, and of course, he ended up on that stockade fence. He was 8515. That's what we called it. Ground up. You know, we went through the grinder, through the glass, and he landed on that shit. Oh, shit. That guy couldn't win if he had to that night. <laughs> yeah. Dad, I don't think he was available for overtime. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say unavailable. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody wants to know what's the difference between the companies. What is the distance? Not the difference. The distance between your companies. Uh, on Congress Street, it was, oh, a couple miles. I mean, Central was downtown and, uh, you know, and then Bram Hall was up by the hospitals and stuff. And then Munjoy Hill was on 
the East End. So, you know, we could get to our box. You know, our box, we were there in two minutes, three minutes, if the most. Mm. You have to worry about no other engine, like in Brooklyn, cutting you off at the, at the <laughs> intersection. <laughs> Hitting any garbage cans. I don't think that, that was that was the stove foundry fire, too. That's we saw Greg on the ladder. I mean, that was a massive group of structures down there because they made stoves and stuff there. And that that thing was just ripping one night. Wow. We, so we had we had it. Uh, we had it three. Or, I went to three or four fires there. And I know the last mm -hmm. night I went, I was on the rescue and the, the guy driving. Don uh, Tori says, where do you want to put the truck? I says, as far away as you can, so I don't have to clean it in the morning. Because mm. this place, is this is the grand finale. That was a fire I went back to on the third alarm. There was a double fat uh, fatality. The fire was up in the cock loft, and we found them there in the back room. It's in the guy and a girl, and it was a, it was a... What kind of building does you have that is the most common? It's it's frame, like three-story frame? Yeah, three, four-story. And we have a lot of downtown. We have a lot of brick. That's Jack Corbett, my buddy there, to the right of the yeah. That's Jack Corbett and I. It was across the street from the firehouse. It was a pawn shop fire, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it was quite exciting. Mm -hmm. Back then, a guy was trying to put it out with a broom. He had the broom burning, and shit. We told him to get out. And it was up it in the dust world. Yeah. That's what I think about when I think about Maine, right there. Snow. <laughs> exactly. Snow. Your balls off and snow. Yeah. You still you still have that letter from the from the yeah? Captain? I still got it. That's yeah, awesome, that's from uh, Don De uh, Don Devine, the captains. Uh, and I got see, I got that hook up with another good guy, mentor and stuff. Was named Phil Magulik. He was the chief in South Portland. Mm. He that that was me at the porn fire. You know, I come out <laughs> smiling. You know, uh huh. Porn well, W N or P O R N? Which porn? <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm pleading the fifth on that one. Uh. Uh. <laughs> I like that Chevy pickup, the middle one there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was a fire down on 4th Street. You know, I got three or four shots. The whole outside of this shack was going, and uh, it was loaded up with stuff. And looks like an, an outside store in the on yeah. Little Italy or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty good smoke show on the way into it. Ooh, yeah. look at the cars. I yeah, they were in around it, and, you know, nice daytime fire. But the, the blue cars, I think that's a Toyota Celica, isn't it? <laughs> Shit, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Lou knew where I was going with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have a lot. You want to keep yeah, going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we got a lot. So we. Uh, we What's the picture with the hockey? That's my kid and I. That's when he was, you know, he was young. Why is it smoking over there? What's going on? We get You don't see the net? We're goaltenders. You ain't getting anything by us. <laughs> we're, smoke, we're, we're firemen goalies, okay? You never seen these guys play? <laughs> no. These two guys are in the NHL now. <laughs> they were Stanley Cup contenders. Look at them. I'm I'm shooting at the kid. <laughs> yeah, but the big guy falls over. <laughs> we'll have to crush the kid to sacrifice to make the save. How's that's that? the one that's on the job, Dana? Yeah, I was on the job. Yeah, he oh, him. That, though. He'd go to the fires with me a lot, though. Yeah. He went to a lot of fires with me. And I just, you know, especially when I was a safety officer, I'd just put him up on the rescue or he'd sit in somebody's car. But Who's uh, Whose helmet does he have on? Mine. Oh, it's yours? Okay. We'll yeah. Cool, uh, all right. So he knew right away that he wanted to be a fireman too? Like, no, 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 no. He what? went to school. He went to school to go for sports training or something. And then he had an epiphany, he told me one day. And I had to go ask the secretary, what the hell's an epiphany? And that's the second coming or a second. He wants to be a firefighter now. And I said, you go to school, I'll pay everything, you know. Now he went to, down to Massachusetts to college. And uh, he did good, though. Christ, we were sitting there at his graduation talking about High honors and this and that. And I looked at my wife. I said, they talking about Nathan? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he did good. And then he, all of a sudden he won the year. Now alarm. he's a firefighter. Yeah, he likes good it. For him. Gone. It's the last alarm. Nice job in the world. Uh, was that one of the articles, right? Uh, yeah. It was, a, it was a card, yeah. That, oh, was, yeah. that was Joe Cavallaro. He got uh, killed at a fire uh, at Oak Street. Um, it was a converted uh, church into a a disco, and they and they bricked up all the windows. The only windows left open were like the bud bud rose up in the in the top. I didn't go to the fire. I'm glad I didn't. It was it was bad. I was in Boston at the Bruins game, and uh, we come back and you know I drove by those guys in the morning and just kind of waved. It was early, and then I got a call from a friend of mine. He says, "Yeah, uh, Joe got killed last night." He says, "No, nah, no, nah, that, that's bullshit, Neil." Nobody gets killed here in Portland. You know, those are big city problems. It, it doesn't happen here. Well, it was a rude awakening. It happens. It doesn't need to be a big city. It can mm -hmm. be anywhere. You know, he got trapped. Uh, 
backdraft. They, the guy said it kind of lifted the roof right up and dropped it right back down. And he got spun around there on a line and he, he basically got deeper into the building and blew the other guys out. And, wow. 1980? Yeah, he was a young you, man. Do you, do you, when you were on the job, I mean, it's because it's such a small, you, you know everybody. Yeah, oh yeah, I knew everybody. You know everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I knew most of the guys in the area anyways because I ran fires all around, you know, Portland, South Portland. I go to Westbrook. These guys were all good, you know. Oh, there's okay. That fire, there's, if you go back to where the German trucks are, mm -hmm. that fire to the right is the backside of that straight State Street fire that I came out to. And I came through an apartment to the left of the fire and I was on a, like a carport roof. And that's what I was facing. So a guy brought me a two and a half over. And it was all ice up on that roof. And I opened it. I went ass over van box. <laughs> that was, was starting to auto extend. Next floor, next floor. Cop comes up. He goes, I got your helmet. And I didn't even know I'd blown off my head. But Jesus Christ, I was seeing stars. And, and when I was getting cooked, too, because the radiant heat was really getting hot there. Yeah. Wow. It's pretty so, intense. All right. So you want to talk a little bit about what, your German? Yeah, that's Germany. That's my son and I. And uh, I... I been over there about 15 times. I've become very good friends with some German firemen. You know? What do you do when you go there? You ride with them? Uh, what do you, I, you I, did, I rode. I went on one call, and it was eight hours later I got back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you do, hey, if you ever do that shit, make sure you get with a guy that speaks English. <laughs> I was with two guys that didn't speak English. For eight hours. For yeah. Eight well, hours. No, I, my buddy came back by. Deep my Kosh is his name. He says, you want to ride with Yeah, because, I mean, nobody spoke English. Wow. Why Germany? Why, 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 how did that happen? Well, he sent a letter to the city requesting a, that's the group right there, requesting a patch from our city. So the chief gave me, he, he knows I'd been there before, and he gave me the letter, and uh, we became pen pals, and then, you know, we're best friends. You know, we, I talked to him tonight. You know, he sent me a picture. Oh, I don't know. He calls me, he says, hey, you, you're on a show? I says, yeah, I'll let you know. How do you yeah. see it? And he says, on TV. You know? <laughs> he course. goes, maybe I see it. I see, I see, the info. I see they uh, roll too heavy as well, right? Oh yeah, I mean yeah. those guys. And this is all volunteer. The guy in the in the driving seat—that's uh, Frank Mode. He's the paid guy. He works days. He takes care of the air packs of the house. He's kind of the, you know, the the general maintenance guy and and, and full time driver. And they got a full time chief. And uh, those are the guys, and a good bunch. What part of Germany is it? It's up by Cologne, mm. up that area, northern and close to France and Holland. And um, they, I do spoke, a, they, they go to fires. Like what? What kind? Oh of yeah, they have some. Have I got a whole section in there. There's some colored pictures you've been spinning around the fires in Germany. Okay, and, uh, let's um, see. If, let's see if I can find them. You said they were colored pictures. Yeah, they were colored. These guys right here. All right, these would be the ones. Yeah, there, there they are. Okay. Wow. And they get some good fires, but their tactics are totally different. You know, they, they, they totally, it's like in, uh, in England when I was with the London Fire Brigade. Their tactics, they're, they're not much into the roof ventilation like we are. Because more of those those buildings over there are more self-contained, um, you know, stone or uh, cinder block. And, you know, that's one I, I noticed over there. Every time everybody goes to bed, these guys are, they didn't have smoke detectors. They didn't have smoke detectors. But they close the doors to every room when they go to bed. You know, and, um, you know, and I started bringing some smoke detectors over. I gave them smoke detectors and uh, we sold them for a keg of beer, you know, and sold them to the locals. <laughs> With some <laughs> bratwurst. Got a couple of brats. Yeah, oh, yeah. We had some good bodies over there. Schnitzel. Schnitzel. And I, uh, I was the dishwasher at the Oktoberfest because they'd clean out that firehouse, send the trucks to the, the five stations in that village, and um, they'd send us in the bumper factory for. Uh, BMW was there, and uh, they send the trucks out, and they make it into a big beer hall, and they oh, party from Friday to Sunday. I was looking to like see if uh, going on over there. I was looking to see if they took the windows. <laughs> I went to that fire. I didn't work it. I was there watching. <laughs> All I'm right. Spraying the outside. Anybody getting in there? What they yeah, they do eventually. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah. It's a surrounding drown. You guys are basically like us, though, right? Aggressive interior. Yeah, town. Portland is. Yeah, yeah, Portland's real aggressive. What's the closest uh, big city fire department to you guys? Uh, well, if you want to call Boston or Manchester, New Hampshire. How far is Boston from you? Uh, hour and a half. Two oh, hours. that's it? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's not far. And we drive. We get a turnpike. We can get there on the turnpike. You know. Is that your boy on the right there? Is that that? No, that's Frank. That's the German fireman. That's what I mean. That's your friend. Yeah, yeah, Frank. Yeah, and that's that's me. We're just coming back from a fire, and he was showing me, you know, his his photos there. Hmm. Okay. And that's him <laughs> down in the picture in the middle with me at the. We had a waterfront fire, and to the left of it, that's the you know the that's Frank again. Man, I could see you could pass for tank back in the day. You could pass for tank. Yeah. Yeah, man. Is he back there? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and that shot right to the left, that's the cruise. That's all the guys there. That's that's Paul. He's a good buddy of mine. He's gone. Um, the guy to way over the left is Mike Dacey and Bob Folly and uh, George, or George Early, the guy to the left of him. The one guy looks like he's uh, lighting up his oxygen. Oh, yeah, he was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he... <laughs> that was you good... sitting on a bumper? Uh, no, I'm not I'm not sure where I am there. So... Oh, let me back up oh. some so you make it. Whoop. Yeah. I don't know. We had, there was a, I can't think that was a second alarm. That was one day the Germans were riding with us, and we had a couple fires. That was a second alarm. We had a worker in the morning. We had a fatal car crash. We were running all day. And they, they thought it was the cat's ash. You know, wow, I come out of a big city and ride and blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yep. You like this all the time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I say, of course it is. A little slow. Yeah. A little slow. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a little slow. Yeah. Right. Cool. <laughs> that's that's our drill schools. That's our academies. That was, you know, just some pictures at the end of the academy. We did those in the winter, too. And those were cold. Yeah, I'm sure. Hell yeah. yeah. It was funny because uh, one of the one of the captains, the training captain, he also had the arson dog, and uh, you know they I don't know if you ever see how they train an arson dog, they don't feed them all the time, you know they get a snack when they do a thing, and the arson dog got on the bus one day it was in the winter, <clears throat> and he got into everybody's food and he ripped everybody's meals oh, up. Shit. Oh yeah, that's yeah. that's back when I was I'm on the left there, that's with no mustache. I was gonna say. No, that's Smitty. I'm to the left. I'm I get the side profile. And uh, that's yeah, that's me. Got the chops, yeah. Nice, that's Gary Keene. He uh, he ended up quitting. He went, and I don't, I think he was end up merchant marine or something. Mm. Right, so you do 13 years in rescue one, yeah, and then you do another 13 as the PF. I was a safety officer, safety too, yeah. officer. So, what is that about? How do you? Well, they had one safety officer in the city, and then when he wasn't around, there was nobody coming back, and you know, and that's when they were kind of coming down. You got to have safety officer on the scene. So, any second alarm, uh, that's Mike Nixon. He's down in Goose uh, Goose Creek, South Carolina. He's the chief down there now. I call it Goose Nuts, but he it's Goose Creek, oh. and uh, that was a fatal fire. And that, I was a safety officer. I'd come back to all second alarms or anything that sounded, you know, uh, going and. Uh, yeah, it was a fire that started. Are you, the, are you an officer then? Are you uh, just a safety officer? Yeah. So you're promoted. Is yeah, promoted? field promotion, basically. Yeah, you want to call it that. Right. I got called in the office a few times. I thought it was field promotion. As long as I was getting my ass chewed. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> quite used to it. So, I did, actually, I got called in when I was riding all the time. I got called in one day and they said, What are you doing? I said, What do you mean? We hear you're going to the cities, New York, you go to Boston, yeah. Well, don't think you're bringing any of that shit back here. And I said, "Oh, I'm sorry. I, you know, didn't need. I know. I didn't think I needed permission to leave. You know, yeah. but uh, stepped on some toes, I guess, because I was coming down and, you know, learning something different and it was for my own interest. And that's just, I'll, I'll talk about it later. But the networking is what really makes things spin. You know, you're doing your job when you're pissing people off, man. Yeah. Oh, I, <laughs> oh, geez. So, so if you're if you're the the, the uh. The safety officer, if you see something that's not going right, you're that's on you to call. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't exercise my my you know, flap my wings too hard. You know, I'd go up and talk, you know, we gotta watch this. And you know, the guys I worked with were pretty good. There was a couple of guys a little resentful. You know, I remember I was talking to one one night and he wouldn't answer the radio, and I'm on the third third back uh, third floor of uh, a building and I'm calling him. He's he wouldn't acknowledge me, and I was trying to keep it keep the companies from walking in between the buildings because the cornice was burning and about five minutes later the whole friggin' thing dropped you know so it's just you know i learned to play the game coop coop says that all the time right coops what which you're, which you're when you when you work with your brother that you know until you're outside looking at the building and you know you don't realize uh a whole different 
It's a whole, it's a whole yeah. Lay of the land. I, I tell everybody, I think guys should ride with the deputy or the chief at least for six months to a year so you can learn what it's like, pick up things on the outside looking in. It's a whole different ball. Game. Yeah. You know, that's a different perspective. I, yeah. I went back to a fire and there's a photo in there somewhere. It was, we had four, four people get killed. Um, and it was a gas fire again. Somebody get pissed off at a girlfriend and he put the gasoline down the back side of this good sized building, torched it off. And when I, I, I heard the alarm come in on my radio. So I, I got up and I shot right across the bridge and I, I went right to the fire and I got there and there was a guy already, he was dead on the sidewalk. He'd fallen out the window or jumped. And I went up to the third floor and I see the guys and it was this real heavy black, you know, that real pulsating shit smoke. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just pushing and pushing. And I see the guys crawling out of it. And they're coming out with the crab, you know, the crab crawl, you know. They were moving. And I was kind of down on the stairwell. And they got out, and that thing lit right up. And we were lucky we didn't lose people there at that fire. You know, I just got out. We just talked. Let's get everybody out of this building. It's, mm -hmm. Again, it's, you know, we've already lost four people. And we shouldn't be losing any more. And it was a, it was a bad show. Mm -hmm. But, um, yep. You can see sometimes what they can't see. So yeah, well, that, that's what I was saying to you earlier. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, and that happened a couple of times. I was up on the roof of a building, and the fire alarm calls and says the chief wants to see you down front. So I went down front. He says, "Yeah, you're the safety officer." And I had a couple other fires where things were getting mixed up. I says, "You can't wear two hats. Either I'm going to be the safety officer. I can't do the rescue work too. You know, it's you're doing company task, and now you're doing the safety job. You mm -hmm. can't be because once you get focused on the company task, you miss." Miss all the readings of other stuff going on. Right. Yep. Well, you mentioned yeah. that in the pre-show, right? That's what got yeah. I mean, that's what we all do, right? I mean, you yeah. get focused on something and maybe you're not paying attention to, you know, what could be hurting you or you know, whatever. You know, right. I, I use the I use the watch as a as an example. Company task, you're looking at the front of the watch. When you're doing safety, you flip the watch around, pop the back off, and there's all these moving things. You're watching 60 things move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, it, it gets kind of tough and you can't be doing both. No. I saw that happen a couple of times. The safety officer got caught up in a company thing, and he missed the big picture. You know, did you did you ever feel like uh, you saw something, and you know, you know that the guys are working, and but you don't want to say something, but you end up saying, you know, like, did you ever feel? Yeah, that happened at a fire. I saw the the uh, center ridge of a, a roof starting to sag, and I got him out. The guy says, "We were all no." I says, "Come out and look." And they go, "Oh shit, we didn't see that." Well, you know, that's what I saw. And it's, you know, the building was a vacant and you know, back in back in the day we had a lot of vacant buildings like you guys, you know, you're going them repeatedly. Well, I mean, what's it take? Do you have to kill somebody? You know, and yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't want that while I was working. You know? Yeah, no doubt. Well, it's it is like this fine line, right? I mean, listen, I've been in a lot of buildings and the chief pulls us out and you know, we think we could do it, right? All that shit. But you know, they pull you out early. And nothing happens, right? Yeah. And everybody says, ah, shit, you know, they couldn't, you know, like that. Yeah. That's what I was getting at. Like, you know, I, if I was in that position like you are, it's kind of like this thing. You kind of try and keep it close as close as possible, right? But that's a fine line, right? You yeah, I mean, get, you know. It's like that that fire in St. Lawrence Street. I just called the, the chief because he says, uh, just give me a kind of a report. I said, get everybody out of here. I mean, the fire's all around us. When, you know, and they went to a defensive operation, but you know, why take a chance of losing somebody? You can rebuild the building. Yep. You know, and it's just uh, I just never was into that. Let's push it to the very end because I was at a fire, and that was just before I did get promoted to a safety officer, where four guys were in this building, and they swore, and uh, you know, the building had been burning now for uh, oh shit, a good hour. And that gable, this is a good site, fell off. Fell off, and that's telling you, come on in, and I'll kill you. Well, mm -hmm. somebody made the suggestion, go in and do a, you know, recon, see what's, you see what's going on. The building's burning, it's falling apart. Yeah, they got up in there, and this other guy, Ronnie O'Brien, and I took, a, I think it was the thirty-five, and we extended it up, and we dogged the ladder that day to the uh, to the windowsill. You know what that is? The chains. You ever heard of dogging the ladder? No. You wrap the chain around it, and you pound these hooks in so the ladder can't get moved. So nobody can come around and steal that ladder. So they dogged it to that because that was going to be a, a, a way in and out of that building. Well, when that building started coming apart, guys were coming out onto that ladder. And it, you know, I was yelling, get out, you know, and the 
the whole thing started collapsing around them. And they wow. got out, but when they fell, they went underneath. And it kind of acted as, uh, you know, uh, a shield to them. And I mean, they get buried with some debris. And luckily, nobody got killed. And the fourth guy, he found his way out, Captain Danny Flynn. Excellent guy. Excellent guy to work with. And uh, he found his way out of the building. And somebody said, you know, we're in. Guy says, the walls are moving. He says, don't tell me. Go tell the chief. You know, shouldn't have been in there. It was on mm. Bradley and Salem Street. That was one of those, you know, again, we were, we were inches and too close. So right. How many times you hear the, the guy say to the chief, two more minutes, we got it. We got yeah, it. Yeah, oh, yeah, minutes. but, you know, when you're outside, that two minutes is not bad. Yeah. You're in the clear air. Oh, it's us asking him that. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> oh, my God. You know how many times? Sometimes that two minutes is one minute, yeah, 59. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying before. Like I know, and that's why that's why when you get chiefs that have been around a long time, guys like yourself, like obviously, you know, uh, people are going to respect that. Like when you say, you "Time know, to go, let's go." Time to go, right? As long as you're not doing it every fire, you know, every fire, you know, the guys no. like, "Yeah, get out, 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 get out," you know. But you know, well, why take the chance? Like, you know, yeah, just... no, I understand. I understand. Well, I, I mean, didn't now. I understand. Any... But I didn't understand it then so much. Yeah. But I understand it more now. Well, I got kind of safety oriented too because I, I you know, been riding in these other cities and you know I was riding in Providence. I used to ride down on Broad Street, Engine Eleven. It was in July of '76. Uh, we went to a fire. It was a three story place, and um, a guy I was with. I think he retired. He was a chief down. His name was Paul Wentworth. I think. I lost track of him because I used to go down there and ride a few times. And we went to this fire one night, and it was it was an awesome job because we were going up the second floor. We had a line, and the chief was saying, watch the trailer, watch the trailer. And I'm going, what the hell is he talking about? And uh, I'm looking, and out of the corner of my eye, I had a mask on. It was the trailer. It was a trailer to a, 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 in the, in the, yeah, a gasoline bomb basically they soaked the rags and they used that and they lit it well that didn't take off so we went up and we went into this room and we're working forward into the room and out of the corner of my eye the guy goes more line i pulled there was a wash tub there and i'm going oh shit i didn't know it was full of gas gasoline i tipped it over when i pulled on the line the gas went all over the floor and And also oh my god and we were all fire. He took the line, put it over our heads like a giant sprinkler, and we backed down the stairwell and got the hell out of there. And the guys on the, it blew the ceiling down on the guys below. And a couple guys got a, a little burnt, but nothing major. But the guy that was running the pump out front looked up. He said, the fire blew out the window. And he goes, I knew you guys were up there. He goes, I didn't know what was happening. If you want to talk about shitting and getting, we did. You know, and wow. uh, we were lucky. But that was experiences, you know, that I just put back here in the toolbox. Mm-hmm. You know, I learned a lot of stuff riding, and, and you know, I continued. And I Did you have a lot of that? Booby traps and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had those in Portland. I, I wasn't at the fire. It was down on Hanover Street. They had it, uh, a can of gas on a wire. And if you went through the front door, the gas was going to tip on you. They had candles burning and stuff, so that would ignite it. So the guys went through a window that night. They didn't go through the front door. And they found that, and then they found carpet over holes in the floor. So, I mean, we had some we had some real shit neighborhoods. Too. That was a common thing in uh, in the seventies here too. I think yeah. that was taking the treads the off the stairs too. I the refrigerators, treads, you know, well, what was, the floors. That's what the yeah. guy from uh, was it Clancy who fell through the opened the door, took one step. Was that his name? Yeah, but I don't think that was that was burnt through the basement. Ah, huh, but he took one step through and he fell yeah, right in, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was riding 45 one night. We went down to this, I don't know where we were, Christ. I was all over the city. I was just, you know, I'm looking up at the tall buildings, you know, and wow. <laughs> and uh, the thing was, we go in, the guy says, look out. And all of a sudden, off the roof comes a, it wasn't an aluminum trash can. It was one of those steel ones. And that was like a goddamn <laughs> shell coming at you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so that's commonplace. It's, well, but obviously, the natives down here enjoy you people. You know, and uh, it was craziness. You know, it's yeah. funny, Dana. When, when uh, we still had those, we still have them in, by two eighty eight. Those heavy, and every time the sanitation guys used to come, you know, we'd have, I don't know, ten of those those cans out there full. And guys, you know, I would go out there. Guys would go out there, give them a hand, and they used to be like, these effing things are so heavy. You know, like they're so used to plastic ones yeah. that they flip in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. I saw one of those come off the roof. Yeah, it's got to go, be like okay. 75. That or a, a paint can they used to throw off the roof full of paint yeah. or a spackle bucket. Yeah. Well, they just enjoyed you guys coming to the neighborhood. They wanted to show their affection, you know? <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> <Yeah. right. laughs> love. It's all love, you know? Yeah, it's all love. You know, they're spreading the love. <laughs> yeah. So where, where am I at here? You went to uh, oh, the they got detailed to the training division. Yeah, after that the training, I, I did the, the academies, but I, I like training, and that's why I kind of glad I, I bounced around on some of these different places. Like when I went to the airport, I didn't really want to become a airport firefighter, but you know, where I was teaching a lot, and you know as well as I do, you teach people, especially guys that want to be firefighters or firemen, they can read a bullshit right off the bat. You know, I wasn't one of these guys. Yeah, I worked out the crash station. I was driving that red three, that big tank of this. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, so was out you... there for, I was out there, I think, maybe five or six months. And I says, no, I went back into training. I says, you know, and I, I didn't think I was going to get certified, but I did. We took uh, NFPA off. They call it air, air Fire Rescue. And we took a test. We were up at Concord, New Hampshire, you know, doing all the hands-on and stuff. We took the test. And. You know, I said to my kid, you know, I got the envelope and I says, Nathan, your dad's a failure. Because I thought I flunked the test and I opened up and I goes, this is a certified that Dana Esdrain is now an NFPA certified airport firefighter. I go, you got to be shitting me. No. <laughs> and I went back into training and I, I, didn't, I never went back out there. It was, I mean, it was okay. It, it's, it's a good thing to do. Um, I learned a lot and I learned one thing. When I'm flying now, I know when the lights on the runway, where you're going, if they're changing colors, you better make sure the lights are the color you're supposed to be in, or you're not going to be going. <laughs> oh, you, uh, you're going all around the country now, teaching. Yeah, still, you still. No, I, I just stayed in this area. I taught all over the state. Um, I did a few classes here. I did a lot of classes for the state. I did. I had my own little company. I went to a lot of the different volley departments and taught, and um, you know, I did you know, seminars and stuff like that. I what enjoyed you, it. You know. What did you teach mostly? I, I did a lot of tactics, fire ground tactics. Nice. And I did uh, firefighter safety survival. And then at the college, I would do uh, um, the entro program, you get the new kids coming in, you know, and that, that was kind of funny. That's got to be great, man. That's it, it, it's good because you could tell the kids are going to make it. And you can tell the kids that aren't going to make it. Mm -hmm. you know, some of them just didn't know what they want to do. And I had three of them. I used to call them the Three Stooges, and these guys were just, <laughs> oh yeah, they were they were beyond that, you know. And they used to piss me off because one day they came in, and they didn't have any of their stuff done. I'm trying to explain to them if you're going to come into this business, people are counting on you. You got to be here on time, and you got to be accountable for all your your actions. Well, they came in one day, all of them, and they didn't have any anything done, and I got pissed. I said, "What are you guys doing?" Well. I says, you know, I've got to leave here because I was going to do a burn somewhere for uh, the department for Portland. And they, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I says, okay, that's it. I've had it. I slammed my briefcase shut. And I says, you three, the three stooges, I got a job for you. And they all puffed right up, you know, they're looking around at everybody like, hey, yeah, well, he's got us a job. And they go, where? I says, Nissen's Bakery. We had a big bakery in town, you know. And they go, what, fire protection? I says, no, the donut room, putting powdered sugar on the donuts because you three fucking idiots, that's all you're going to be. And I was pissed, and they knew it, too. So they just, you know, they, they straighten out. Them, huh? Did they straighten out? Or? Oh, no, Christ, no. I don't know what they're doing now. I, you know, and I take interest in a lot of the kids that that because they were good students. And right. that was, they said that to me one day. A kid goes, how do you remember our names? I says, because you're either a good student or you were a shithead. And the kid says, well, what was I? I says, you figure that out. Mm -hmm. You know, so. You remember the three, funny. the three A's in the academy roof? What's that? Do you remember the three A's in the academy, Lou? No. Oh. Either you're an asshole, <laughs> anonymous, or what was the other one? All-star or an all-star. Yeah. <laughs> if that's, they true. Know, all I mean, that's true. All-star, all-star. Anonymous. 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 No, you, you don't Nobody know, knows your know name. Nothing. Asshole, they're going to know your name. Yeah. 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 And it, so it hasn't changed that much. Just to let you know, we get like young guys watching the, the podcast, right? And I've gotten quite a few emails from kids in school and college, <clears throat> I guess, to take it fire science or maybe they're doing something like you're doing. And uh, they have to write reports. And I usually send me and Coops kind of this, this one guy, I remember he was doing a, a project on. 
and I think we talked about it on the podcast at some point about you know not getting volleys anymore, right? They're not yeah. getting and and what 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 it's going to lead to, right? Mm-hmm. And he did this huge paper a whole year. He did this whole paper and he sent it to me on a spreadsheet on an email, and I was just like, I mean, legit, like he has it figured out, like what it would cost to to get the paid people to come in. Uh, you know, medical, like, you know, because they can't get the volley. How many can they keep? You know, something similar to what you were saying, two guys on a freaking fire truck as opposed to, you know, you get some volleys and, but now the volleys get, he talked about that, like paying a pension. Yeah, you're right. To, to the volley so that they, you get more interest, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or something like that. He did a great job, but that, that to your point, like the kid was definitely squared away. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, and you get some kids, you can tell they're going to go. You know why I liked it, it came into us? We get a lot of the guys that were veterans that get up, you know, did their stint and they came in. They were already, I want to say, they were pre-molded. They knew the game. They knew the game of life. They knew that you had to be on time. You had to be, you know, responsible. But if you get a kid that just comes out of high school and everything's a, everything's a joke and, mm. and – it just, you know, there are no safe spaces in the fire department. <laughs> yeah, <Sorry>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's changed. I'll tell you that some vets come through and uh, just interviewing a few, and you can just tell that they, it's changing a little bit on their end too. They're not yeah. as, it's not as solid as they used to be. Where oh, really? veteran, it's uh, they the personality. Like I said, we just did some interviews not too long ago, and I was like, this guy's a vet, huh? Hmm. Kind of just doesn't come off as like a, you know I don't say a marine or whatever it is but you yeah. can just tell somebody that's a vet or in the military or just squared just, away right like yeah totally just squared, squared away you know some guys are just not you know it's like I had I had some guys they were in uh, they came back from Afghanistan and stuff and they were real quiet real you know real quiet and they would sit there and the kids would be bitching oh yeah we had a call last night we had to transport to Portland it was a twenty minute transport and blah 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 and the guy come up to me after he goes I don't believe this I go what he goes, we were caught in some of these fire bases where we had to keep guys alive for two days because we couldn't get out. And they're bitching about a 20-minute response to the hospital. Yeah. You know, they're in a helicopter, you know, and the thing's being shot at. They're in turbulent air, and they're, they're bouncing around yeah. trying to start an IV. And these guys are bitching about riding for 15, yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah, these are kids who never had a job before in their yeah. life, bro. Yeah. Yeah, so they're it's on a- their teeth. It's all perspective, man. You got to get some perspective. That's yeah, what they got to do. That's what I tell you. Call it. I call it a good ass kicking. I don't know about you. Yeah. Perspective, man. ass kicking. Perspective. Uh, hey, Dana, somebody in the chat wants to know if what would happen if a student wore a baseball hat in your class? They were supposed to take them off, and if they didn't, they got their ass chewed. That was odd. Uh, what if take it, it off. Day, you know the uh, game. What if it was a sock task force? Hell, uh, a hat, though. I mean, that's, 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 <laughs> I don't care what hat it was. Ah, it could be a know. halo. And I made it sure, too, that you get in there when the, and you get rid of your phones. Didn't I? Uh, that used to piss me off. Yeah, the phones you're are on the phones, down you know, down, you're down, you're, they're, not, they're missing the whole class. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, had, then I had these two brothers in there, Andrew and Brian, and they knew I was pissed off about the phones. So one came in the morning, and then one came in the afternoon. And the one Andrew, I think, was in the morning, started calling his brother on the phone, the phone ring. I just, it, it rang. And I looked at him and I said, Brian, what? He goes, it's Andrew. He's calling me. Well, what he was doing, he was setting them up. Yeah. He knew he'd get his ass chewed. And he did. But we moved it along. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, so it's just. Nate, was- Nate's in there. Is that your son? Probably. He said, what happened if the bridge was up? Oh, that was another one. I gave them all because, you know, a lot of them came across the river. And if the bridge was up, they got one free pass. Well, those two clowns, the brothers, Andrew, they lived on the right side of the bridge. And they pulled that with me, and I, I let them go on it. I said, yeah, you'll get that one. But, you know, I know where you guys live, you know. And I liked it when the guys you. would come in with a cup of coffee, and they were five minutes late. Where you been? What do you mean? I said, you're five minutes late. Well, it's five, five minutes is five minutes. That's my five minutes. Yeah. And uh, mm. they said, well, you know, I said, no, I started locking the door. And I had one kid from Ireland. He came, he was there for a semester and he never came in one day and he came in at the break. I says, uh, Declan, where you been? He goes, where I come from, if the class door is shut, you don't open it and come in. And he meant it too. And he didn't come in. No shit. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was a fucking Declan. What are you talking about? What are you fucking about? Oh yeah. He was, he was a good kid. He was a good kid. He, he went back to Ireland 
He was all he was uh, doing safety engineer studying or something. Mm. They came over. He's a, a smart Irishman. Yeah, very smart. smart. Like what about everybody's... Mexico? Didn't, didn't he do something in Mexico too? I went down there. I was down there at one of those all inclusives. Uh, and I stopped uh. at that station in Playa del Carmen. Uh, Playa del Carmen. And it's the Mayans, you know, right there. I mean, look at the size of those guys. Look at me. They're all looking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I was about three feet that's tall, the I look like that's the bombero. Bombados. Yeah. I'd have been towering on them, you know, if I was three feet tall, they would have probably thought I was Hulk Hogan, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Jesus. those wow. poor guys, they, they said they were 48 on, had 48 off. Their response territory was 30 miles wide and 60 miles long. Wow. Yeah. And uh, they were good guys. I, I had a translator. My translator was the cab driver. And the other pictures there, they had them doing knots and stuff. And yeah. But, you know, I felt bad for these guys. And when I hear guys bitch about how bad they got it, these guys didn't have shit for equipment. Everything they had was basically donated. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was given to them. There's a picture of the equipment there in the back room. And they were proud of that stuff. Yeah, that was the shot right there. That was donated to them from fire departments in America. That's uh, And we're part of that. We've donated several yeah. equipment to them. I mean, they're, they're firemen. And they just, you know, they had a snorkel league. Somebody gave them from... Uh, California, and it was too big. They couldn't get around the streets. That's funny you say that because we get a lot of guys <coughs> that follow the show. Like I see, you know, where they're from. Like I'll, I'll look on Facebook or so. They'll comment on something in Spanish, yeah. and then I'll see where they're at. Yeah, and they're they're following the stuff. You know, yeah. they're following our pictures. Look, following I mean, all stuff. I, I travel around the world, and if a guy's going to be a fireman, he's a fireman. You might not be able to speak the same language, but he's got the same mm. attitude. The same character build, and uh, you know they're, they're they're spot on. They're good guys, you know. And mm, those guys were all young guys too, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And I remember a, a kid that was in. Uh, uh, what's he talking to my son? I see it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, fucking. Oh, you know, if the the chewing. I had this kid, uh, Bob Mertz. He's a <laughs> lieutenant, I think. And you know, there was no tobacco on campus. And this kid, I loved him. He was a good kid, smart kid, and. Uh, he come in, you know, Pepsi bottle, clear one, chewing, you know, spit. And so I let it go for two or three weeks. And uh, I finally said, Mr. Mertz, that's Pepsi, right? And he kind of looked at me. Well, yeah, why? I said, well, normally when you drink it, it goes down. But your bottle seems to fill back up. <laughs> you got two things. You know the policy. You know my policy. You drink that or you get the hell out. He swilled on that. And then he ran out of the building. I thought he had to throw up. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, yeah, he puked. He so the next week he goes to me, well, I got away with it for a long time. I says, no, I just let you get away for the grand finale, yeah. you know. But, yeah. yeah, that was the chewing policy there. Sure. I thought he was referencing bubble gum or something like that on a, on mm. a talk show, podcast, or something like that. <laughs> oh, like no chewing gum? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was awesome. That was, what's I didn't go back and listen. I, was, I said Dave I said Fox I was going to go back I was going to go look back and listen to it, but I couldn't even. Uh, I didn't go back. <laughs> so you, you went back to Engine Nine to retire from. Yeah, that that's why I retired because the, the guys I worked with out there, Tommy Valeni, Don Davis, and another kid was a paramedic. We had a four man company, and that was out out in Daring, and it was busy, you know, because all the companies, the more they cut, the more we got busy. Right. Uh, years ago, there were slow companies, and there were the downtown companies, and I always liked being busy. But I went out there because I could really. Kind of gravitate with the guys. We had a lot in common, you know, over the years. Because, you know, you got 30 years in, the guy's got a year in. Yeah, you got the same job, but it's a whole different, you know, yeah. view. Because, like, when I first went in, when I first started riding, there was still some World War II vets just getting done. And then uh, then the Vietnam guys came. You know, they were a lot of Vietnam vets there and you know, good guys to work with. The Captain Dave Brown, I worked with him for years. He was a captain on the ladder, and he was a Vietnam vet. And he was a he was good, good man, you know. Stayed cool under pressure and okay. always the same theme. Yeah, <laughs> always yeah, the well, same thing. Vietnam guys. Yeah, just uh, you know. So it's a you know good experiences all the way around. You know. So and, uh, how long were you in Engine Nine then? I stayed. I, I between that and the academy, I was there like two or three years, and then I was done. You know, and people always ask, "How do you know when it's time to get done?" Like I was told, "You'll know." Yeah, you'll know. And I, it was just one of those things. I got. Got going to work one morning, and I said, you know, this isn't fun anymore. Mm. It's becoming a job, you know, and I just said, you know, and I, my, my back was screwing up, and my, my knee was bothering me, and 
you know, it was just getting to the point where that's my producer that's walking. Around. Say, yeah, nice. Great, great She's job. All this stuff out, you know. She wants it. That's her way of getting on the show a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be talking to you guys. How's that? <laughs> I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be talking to you on the phone. <laughs> Definitely a better half. Done, done good. Done good. So you retire. Wow. Let's go over some of the awards you received. The uh, VFW Firefighter of the Year, eighty-five yeah. Southport Island City Council commendations for life-saving rescue. Yeah, I came uh, back to that fire in Portland. I was the only guy from Portland there. Hmm. And that's the Oliver end. T. Stanborn Administrative Service Award. Yeah, that was at the airport when we got the uh, awards for becoming aircraft fire. <laughs> <laughs> Firefighter Frank E. Cohen Class A Merit Award. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, I think, after that fire. Um, the unit then, citation uh, was on Washington Ave, and that fire was that one up on um, mm. the St. Lawrence Street. And we basically and called it Deputy that. Chief you know. William H. Steele unit citation, 95. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we talked about how you taught. Uh, where was the one I'm looking for that I thought was really interesting? Where's, oh, here it is. Fire brigade training at Maine Yankee Nuclear Power Plant. For oh, yeah. Years. That was good training. I mean, that's I was starting in hazmat way back then because they were big into that. You know, the NRC really regulates everything up there. And those guys are, you know, they're uh, oriented to task. You know, the manual says this, you do it to that. And that was kind of tough training them because I didn't know the fire brigade. I thought these guys wanted to be on the fire brigade, but no. Their job description, they were told that they had to be on it. Now, have you ever taught somebody that doesn't want to do that work? That's tough stuff. Yeah. You know, they're just dragging their feet and, you know, pissing and moaning the whole time, some of them. But I, I had some real good guys, but there was a few of them that just, you know. Mm. And we had a little, not a scuffle, but we had some words one time, and I got kind of called in and to the manager's office, and I said, look, I do this shit for a living, and this is no joke. Guys can get killed in training. Mm -hmm. We're doing live, live training exercises. I says, I don't want that on my shoulders. These guys, they don't pay attention. Somebody gets hurt or killed. And so they get it all squared away. They said, well, if anybody gives you a hard time, you send them back to the office. When that word went out, whoa, everybody stepped up. You know, but that was good training. And, you know, that was the difference between working for a municipality and working for a private company. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You, the money is no, no, no problem. You need mm. something, you've got it. That was like us learning hazmat, right, Roof? Thank God they paid us overtime to learn it. Otherwise, Holy Christ, we would have been. Thinking, those guys. What are you going to teach somebody in a nuclear power plant? Run. That's it. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, and, and when I first went up there, you know, I was I was impressed because I'd never been inside a nuclear power plant, and they had gun towers, they had you know guard towers all around it. Hmm. They had guys walking around here with with guns, and that was you know um, a little eye opener. Yeah, for, 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 due to the uh, terrorist problems, and I. Right. I and I think of the guy where I was talking, he was in security and they had a breach of uh, one night and there was state police, I think, or somebody were coming up to see if they could breach and get in there. Well, this guy had a gun at the back of his head. And the guy said, upstate, you know, I'm in here. He said, don't move out, you know. And they, these guys were, you know, they were, they were shitting themselves because they didn't know this was a drill and they right. would, you know, they were doing what they were supposed to. And, um, you know, they were. But the guys, the gods I like working with because they were the hands-on type guys, you know. They they wanted to do this, but there was a lot of good operators too. Is it still know. operating? No, they, they uh, dismantled it. It's gone. It's a big field now. I oh, think the, uh, the the rods are still up there. The nuclear rods are still up there in these big casks, and you know, you get gods all around it. So, right, what gig do you have now? What's your gig now? Um, I work at the beaches in the summer. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. I really don't do too much training. I got a call that last night. A kid wanted me to come down and do some training for him, and then I might get back into it a little. But I, I gave there's a picture in here of my kid and this guy, um, Eddie McGarry. I don't know if you can find that. We were going down to Martha's Vineyard. This was years ago. And the young kid? Yeah, it's, we're on a boat. You can see us wearing t-shirts. Oh. Okay, let me give me a few seconds while you. Oh, here it is. I got. It. Yeah. Boop. Yeah, there's Eddie. He's in the green shirt. That's me, and that's my kid. And Eddie's now a chief, uh, 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 deputy chief in Chelsea, Mass. And his buddy there was at school with him, Phil, I think it was Phil Merritt. He's a captain on a ladder company last I knew down there. Two good guys. That's my kid and me. And 
Your Your mustache mustache does chain a lot, man. What's that? (laughs) Full different angle. (laughs) It just got lighter. I I put this lightness into it just to make it more distinguished, you know? It's (laughs) working. (laughs) Yeah, it's working, all right. (laughs) uh, I got to give you this long list, Ruffy, of where this man is. You talk about guys who like to ride places. This is how we're going to, before we get into the old school tip of the day. These are the countries, and these are all fire departments that you rode with, right? Well, the ones in Europe, I, I toured and I, I traveled. Right. I like the London Fire Brigade. I hung around with them for a full day. I went up the Thames River on the fireboat Phoenix with them. They took me to the training academy. I ate in the office's mess. They're real snap too, you know, and mm-hmm. it was pretty good. And I got with this kid. His name was Peter, Peter Tinsley or something. And they had me at the training academy. And um, we went out after. We stopped with all these guys after the tour that day. We had a couple of beers. And, you know, Peter, we were talking about different things and smoke, he said, doesn't burn. I says, I, I hate to differ with you, but smoke burns. I've seen it burn. Well, no, and he went, took off and came back with all these papers and set them down. He went and got all that. Okay. And one of the old, old chiefs said, Peter, listen to the lad from America. He's right and you're wrong as usual. Well, that pissed him off. So we went out that night. And he showed us around town there. We had a few beers. And then he wanted to say, he said, there's nobody that's ever gone through our rat run. So we'd like to have you come back and do it. You'll be the first guy outside the London Fire Brigade. Well, the rat run was their air pack maze. And they had the, the pipes, you know, your, your low profile. Uh-huh. Drop the air pack, go through, put it back on, come out. Well, he said, no, you can't take your air pack off. I said, well. You ain't fitting. <laughs> I ain't fitting. Yeah. He was going to go through the rat run with me. Mm-hmm. Well, when I got home, there was a letter in the mail, and he asked me where I was, and he said I had it all set up. Oh, he had no intentions going through the rat run. He was going to be there. He was going to the BA control officer. He was going to time us, and he was bringing a London Fire Brigade's photographer with him because they were going to catch my ass stuck in that pipe with the air pack on. I knew he was setting me up. The TikTok. <laughs> well, make a long story short. That night after we were out having a few beers, you know, he's just pushing his pushing his thing. And, you know, he's showing me these fireman carries. And now he wants to arm wrestle. Okay, I'm, you know, this is getting old. So I'm, I beat him four, five, six times straight. And I says, Pete, when are you going to get through your head? He goes, what's that? I said, we beat you in 1776. Here it is now, ninth <laughs> means. We're still beating your ass. When do you guys give up? <laughs> so uh, That's funny. You know, but I, I traveled all around. I went over to France, at Strasbourg, and I was I got you here. Innsbruck and Vienna. Yeah, um, that was those were tall Dusseldorf and Bergen Bergnachstadt, Germany. That's right. where I rode with the guys. That's where my buddies yeah. were from. Strasbourg, France, Wales and Cardiff. Cardiff, yeah. Uh Edinburgh. Edinburgh, Scotland. Uh had women cleaning the station there, you know. I'm in there. We were doing the tour and I see these two women and I go, What are they? Well, they clean the station. So what do you mean? They clean the firehouse. We don't mm-hmm. clean it. They do. I go, you're kidding me. No. What do you guys do? We fight fires. They clean the station. Yeah. I go, yeah, they had a sauna in there and everything. I, Jesus, That's it ain't crazy. bad, you know. <laughs> Back in the day, the New York City Fire Department had these ladies called matrons, and they, they were usually widows. Yeah. And the fire department would pay them to make the beds and clean clean up. Yeah. I think 140 was one of the last, was your last Was the last company to have it. Yep. And they actually paid her like a, uh, a pension after that till she died. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so England, London Fire Brigade, Bradford Fire Brigade, Switzerland, uh, Lausanne, Switzerland, Lausanne, that was- Holland, U- Utrecht, Utrecht. Yeah. Uh, Canada, Montreal, Quebec City, yeah. wow. Toronto Fireboat, Mexico yeah. Playa del Carmen. I like the fire service. Yeah, I think you was, I traveled all over. The one in Montreal was another story. I had a Montreal fireman riding up front with me. And another kid that spoke French, he was from Montreal, another guy. They were from uh, Concord, New Hampshire. We went up there on a tour, and uh, we were going over to see, you've ever heard of those Bronto Skylifts, the big the trucks? I think the biggest one now is 210 feet in the air. Yes. And they had a couple of them, and I think they were 150, 175 foot. I just want to go over and take a look at it. So we pull up on the, on the apron or the ramp, whatever you want to call it, and they're all standing there. Look at my license plate. And one of them turned around and said in French, remember, we don't speak English to these guys. I'm going, okay. And the guy sitting next to me, he's a Montreal fireman, but it's a big group up there. And they don't all know each other. So we got out and, you know, I spoke English. And they was, you know, you know. 
okay, and we went over looked at the truck. It was out of service because it was missing a couple pieces or whatever. So my mom come in. So I'm videoing them, and they're going out the door. They jump on the truck or the ladder, whatever you want to call it, slammed into a parked car. As they go, and I go, yeah, these guys don't speak English, and they sure as Christ can't drive good either. They bang right into that car. I got to kick it. That was called instant karma. You want to play a game? Yeah, bro. <laughs> I got a game. Right here. Instant karma. Uh, yeah. Karma. karma. Hey, Dana, it's JP Adams, the boys from Dirty Lou, say hi. Oh, that's Lewiston. That's a good group up there. They, they got a uh, department. Um, I think they got 80, 90 guys, but, boy, they burn up there. They yeah. got the three, four-story wood frames. It's an old mill city, and those guys burn hard, and they do a good job. Again, they're, they're cut, they're cut, they're cut. But the, if you guys come up and saw some of the fires that we get up here, and what we, we do with what we get, what, what, what you got, yeah. that's a that's a common theme, like that we've opened yeah, our eyes to less. since the podcast. Yeah, we could not believe, you know, it's just a common theme from, yeah. you know, we're we're the only city that really has that. Really, yeah. I mean, even even some of the other biggest cities, they don't have what we have. You know. Yeah. I wrote some in Boston. They were they had five man ladder companies. I think this was back in the seventies too. A friend of mine's uh, Roger Kendrick. He's he's down. He's a lieutenant and uh, he owns Boston Fire Gear. I don't know if you ever heard that. He does all the shirts and he does that. He yeah. uh, he owns Boston Fire Gear. But um, you know the, that city's changed too. They still got quite a few guys. Uh, they're still riding. I think four or five on a company. You know, and people don't get it. You 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 drop down to three. You can't do shit. I mean, you just, you got, you think, wow, look at all the trucks. Yeah, it was just to get enough men to work two trucks, you know, get two you could function with. We got so, six on the truck. Yeah. You got six on the truck. Well, when I was riding down, and I think it was a uh, 58 truck that Tiller that I was riding on that night. Um, that was when they were hiring the guys back during the peak hours. I think I was the eighth and ninth guy on the truck. Yeah, they would have an extra roof man. They would run. Yeah, they had an extra guy. And, you know, and I, I'm sitting there going, Count like Jesus Christ, this is three companies in Portland now, you know. <laughs> we have that nine guys on a ladder, the guys were on the side, yeah. <laughs> guys were on the side in the yeah, phone booth. Craziness, yeah, in the phone booth, yeah, the phone booth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was, it was, uh, like I guess, say, I enjoyed all that, and, and it was, it was good to bring all that knowledge back and you know, and just to, to pass it on, and that's what I call networking, you know. Well, you made a lot of lifelong friends there, you know, doing yeah. all that, too, right? Yeah. I mean. I still talk to a guy over in England in Bradford. I don't know if you guys remember. It was in the 80s, the Bradford Soccer Stadium disaster. Where the soccer Is that when stadium, everything collapsed? When it collapsed? Well, it, it, it burnt. No, it burnt. Oh, no. It burning on TV. And, and uh, Oh, shit. He was a primary dispatcher. And that, that, he, that kind of put him out. Oh, nice wow. guy. Nice what guy. year was that? I think it was 80. I think I might remember six, that. 86. Bradford Fire uh, Soccer I think I remember that. disaster. I have to Google that. The Google. Yeah, a lot of guys died, you know, like people, civilians, you know, and yeah, the, the yeah. radios got jammed and he it just everything, you know, how they say if one thing goes wrong, it can all go wrong. It did. And uh, Murphy's yeah. Law. Yeah, it was Murphy's Law, big time. And, you know, oh, he shows I, talked up. To him. I talked to him and my German buddies. This is a good thing about, you know, I haven't been over since COVID. I think the last time I was over, my father traveled with me and I haven't been over. But, you know, you get that WhatsApp thing. Mm -hmm. We can, mm -hmm. sit, we can drink together and yeah, 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 it's yeah. great. It's like talking like this, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 6,000, 7,000 miles away from each other, but we're talking and same stories, you know? But uh, it's good. Please tell Dan and I say hello. Creed Ray V. Oh, yeah. That's Creed. He was a good guy to work with. That's the stadium fire right there. Holy shit. Yeah. They got a guy walking on the infield burning, and he was from the... Oh, village. I remember that guy. I remember that, that Yeah, they tackled him, yeah. He I was, remember that. Okay, that I remember. Keithley. That's where I was staying when I was over there with a, a fireman named Paul Dodd. He's I left the that. apartment since, but that guy was from their village. I remember that guy. The, yep. that, that was the one that they showed all the time. I remember that guy. Right. Hmm. All right. I think it might be that time, Gonzapotamus. It is. It might be about that time. What I time is that? So. What time is oh. that? It's time for, you ready? The old school tip. Of, of the day, 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 day. All right, okay. kid, take it away. Okay, well, as I told you earlier, my old tip of the day was going to be doing the basics, but it's quite obvious that got taken up in the last show, so I don't want to repeat it. But it is important to remember the basics 
in firefighting today, a lot of training is the high tech stuff, which is good. But if you're not training the, the basics, you know, your next fire is going to be your first. I mean, that's called pulling lines, um, you know, throwing ladders, stuff like that. But the thing, you know, I'm talking from a safety as that safety officer's aspect is complacency. You know, and this umbrella is a lot of the stuff we do on the fire ground. And the first thing is attitude, you know, and complacency is a killer, especially in this business. And I think everybody knows what complacency is, you know, been there, done it. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't, uh, you know, uh, I don't need to wear the gear right. And I always said, you know, you can dress down for the occasion, but you can't dress up. And I know of guys that got burnt severely. A guy didn't have his gloves on and he got caught in a flash over and really burned his hands. And, you know, complacency is something you've got to fight off in, in this uh, fire, the fire world because it sets in. And I've had people say, I never get complacent. And I go, yeah, really? I said the same thing, but I got caught a couple of times. And it was like one day we had a street box come in, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, spring afternoon. I figured the, the kids pulled the box to see us roll in. So I just threw all my turnout gear on the truck, you know, jumped up on us. We used to ride standing up, hanging under the roof. And we're going down over the hill on uh, Deer and Ave. We're heading out towards William Street. And now this isn't supposed to be happening, but there's a guy standing there pointing from the street box at a building. We got there, the fire's blowing out the solar windows. Now, I'm not ready for the ready to go to work. You know, I got complacent. Now I got to get dressed. I got to get into the game. I got to get my mind set. And, uh, you know, you know, I got my stuff on. Luckily, I got my boots on the right feet. And, you know, the D-rings were all off by one or two. But I got that up. And, uh, you know, so complacency is a big thing. Another thing, too, it's training. When you're training, train like you're going to work. You know, I always said, you do half-assed training, you're going to do half-assed work. Because when you get there at, at the fire or whatever incident you're going to be doing, if you have a train like you want it to go and you do it half-assed, you're going you're gonna to act that way, too, at the scene. Um, and the big thing, too, is just, you know, don't make your next fire your first fire. You know, there's a lot of articles out there you can read. Uh, and the networking is what I'll close it out with. Networking has helped me a lot. And I'm talking with your local fire departments or, you know, just area departments. And, and there's so much out there now on the computer. There's so much, you know, in the trade magazines. And, and, and get to know guys. I mean, that's how I had a successful career. And that's why I enjoyed it, because I could network with guys, not only in my city, but uh, other cities and around the world. And everybody's got something to offer. You know, I don't care. What city you come from, some you can do it better some way, or they've got a technique that works. So, you know, networking, uh, don't get complacent, you know, stay up on your, your everyday drills, whatever you do. But it's training is, is probably the thing today with the less active fires. Uh, training is what's going to keep you alive. And pay attention, you know, listen to people. And, and just there's so much out there you can learn from now. You know, back in the day, there wasn't much. You know, we didn't have really too many seminars or, you know, there's a few articles out in magazines. But now there's so much off it. Take advantage of it. Most of it's free. So that's what I think my tip of the day is. You know, pay attention and have a good career. I like it, kid. All right. I'll tell yeah. you right now, the networking thing, I mean, it, we, would have, we would have never – I mean, I didn't do that. Uh, but now just from doing the podcast – and the people that we've met, I mean, obviously through guests and then, you know, talking at guests and then we go out to dinner. You know, it's just an incredible spider web of mm -hmm. and you can easily get into it. I mean, you can yeah. easily go to the shows. We go to the shows all the time. You meet yeah. people. And that's and, where you can really network at the show. Yeah, yeah you could really network. There. If you, you could just walk around and meet people, you go to you go to some of the seminars. You could I mean, but like you said, that would be you have to pay. But what, to get to your point, free stuff, you could walk around and meet so many, so many guys, and you can get what out what you want to put into it, right? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, what it you is. Gotta, you got to remain a student of the craft, my friend. Yeah, that's it. Nobody's nobody's a master. If they are, stay the hell away from them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to say that. If a guy says he knows everything, I know one thing. I ain't going yeah. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're never too old to Because yeah. yeah. I had a guy one day, and he knew everything. He knew everything. Christ, we were cooking fried clams. He knew everything. I said, we, you know. You call those one-uppers. Yeah, he, he and I said, you're a pretty smart guy. You seem to know a lot. He goes, yeah, I do. I said, why don't you know, know enough to shut your friggin' mouth? <laughs> because, you know, you're just being a clown. One pet of Yeah. Topper. So. Topper. All right, we got one more commercial to play, bro. Hit it.
Okay. We're going to listen to Health and Safety. The First Responders Center for Excellence is a not-for-profit organization dedicated to protecting the lives and livelihoods of first responders. Their education and research initiatives aim to bring greater awareness and understanding to the challenges to the health, safety, and well-being of firefighters, EMS personnel, and other first responders, too. They are an affiliate of the National Fallen Firefighter Foundation. All right, this one is for the female firefighters out there. There are remarkable women on the front line who face unique challenges at work, especially during their motherhood journey. At FRCE, we've created a guide for medical providers who care for our female firefighters during their pregnancy. Our programs are designed to increase awareness, promote understanding, and encourage the integration of this guide into healthcare for women in firefighting. Visit First Responder firstrespondercenter.org to download this guide this guide for free. Or you can hit it up on the, uh, what do you call it, code when Gans plays? QR there. code. QR code. When Gans puts up the QR code. And that is our health and safety tip. Yes. Dana, nice job, brother. Oh, well, thanks, job, bro. Thanks for having me on the show. And now and I think, I don't know how many people are watching from around the country, but they know one thing. We do have power, and we do have in-house toilets, okay? <laughs> Excellent. And you park your car in the lot. Right? I, I didn't even know that. Right. You're yeah. going up to, to yeah. Kenny Bunk Pot. Yeah, Kenny, Kenny Bunk. Bunk Pot. Yeah. 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 Let's get park some your lobster. Car. Some lobster. It's lobster. Lobster. Yeah. lobster. Yeah. Creed. Creed Ray V says hello. Hello. Hi, Creed. What <laughs> up, Creed? Yeah, so, you know, I like the, the shout out stuff there. There's so many guys I know, you know, and uh, like I got a kid there that he used to ride with me, Stevie Hall. He's retired lieutenant now. And it's just, it, I, I enjoyed the riding program because I learned a lot when I went to these other cities. And then we instituted one in Portland. And, you know, the difference was they, they really couldn't go in the building. But, you know, when I was in Providence, I was right there on the line with them. And, you know, I went to some good fires there too. You're not a cop. You know? And it was just, you know, the networking. Uh, I know today with all the liabilities, riding is almost out. I don't know yeah, if it's done. Ride and observe. That's but done. Jesus, you're like a sponge. If you're really into it, you can bring so much back. And, you know, like I said, the trenching, I learned that in New York. And I've seen it used up here. We talked about it. And that Phil Magulik, we had a big fire in a racetrack up here. And they, it was the clubhouse with a, a catwalk in the, in the grandstand. And we had a line inside holding the fire out, and they trenched the roof, and we ended up saving the grandstand. And, uh, you know, Phil McGulick was, was a guy that used to come down and ride, too, and he, he was one of the guys that got me into the riding and really helped me a lot. So it's less of this and more of this. Yeah. Well, that's why you got one mouth and two ears. <laughs> that's right. I like that. There's the old school. That's why you got two of these things. Yeah. You know? Keep listening, baby. All right, so we will not be here next week. Rufi and I will be in Ohio, like I said. Come see us at the Firehouse Expo, Expo. Firehouse Expo 40th anniversary. Come and see us in our booth. There's the shirt. Columbus. Come, come get up. Columbus, Ohio, next week. Yeah. That new shirt you're coming up with, I saw last week. That, Weather Forever? That, yeah, that's a cool one right there. That's that's sharp. Hell, yeah. We'll, get, we'll send you one of those. That's a good-looking shirt. I'll we'll hook you uh, up, kid. We'll hook you up. It's wicked. All right, so we will see you. We got a lot of good guys coming up, man. So we will not see you next week. We'll see you the following Monday, right, Ruff? Following Monday. Correct. All right. All right. Thanks, thanks for having me on, guys. I enjoyed it. Dana, great job. Thank brother. you. No, good stuff. No, good don't, time. Don't hang up on us. Stay for the for the. Yeah, I'll, I'll hang with you. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. We'll see you. Stay low and go. All right, everybody. We'll see you at the big one. Thanks a lot. All right, guys. See you at the top floor. Stay safe. <laughs>